was summoned from Earth by the Great Flame Empress to be her kept husband. Yet, because he's in a guardian domain, he has to suppress his own powers. This woman mistakenly thinks he's a futureless body cultivator. She wants to subdue him to serve her. At this moment, in a corner of the southern wilderness realm, the barren land is filled with tears and space everywhere, along with countless spouts of Earth fire. It's such a broken world, the space above suddenly distorts. In the next second, several figures are spat out. Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji, who have left the Guardian Domain, are shouting simultaneously, Xiao Tian, they have clearly broken their seals, and return to their 14th level of cultivation. Zi Xinglian, who is beside them, has even reached the 17th level. She's staring at the distant spatial barrier, murmuring, I wonder what the story is behind the sacred dragon that sacrificed its life to create this Guardian Domain. I'm already at the 17th level, yet my level is still being suppressed in the Guardian Domain. It's hard to accept. However, Zi Xinglian spreads her hands and looks at Xiao Tian. Hand over the relics of the sacred dragon. Here, without the protection of the sacred dragon's domain, you have lost all advantages. But Xiao Tian, who was brought here by Zi Xinglian, opens and closes his mouth, unable to hear what she is saying. The sound of thunder and exploding flames here is too loud. Xiao Tian feels a burst of irritation. What the hell is this? It's so noisy here. Even if I remove sensory restrictions, all I can hear is the roar. What is she saying? I can't hear clearly. Eastern Gao Xian, feeling his restored strength, is already somewhat impatient to give Xiao Tian a good beating. Why not just take action? Why waste time talking? Little did he know, Zi Xinglian gave him a cold glance, rebuking him in a frosty tone. Do you have a say here? Eastern Gao Xian quickly lowers his head to apologize. I'm sorry, my lord. I didn't mean it that way. In front of Zi Xinglian, he can only obediently listen. Then, Zi Xinglian looks at Xiao Tian again, shouting triumphantly. Face reality, Xiao Tian. A body cultivator is just a body cultivator, not making much of a splash. Better to submit at my feet. I'm very interested in your body. I'll allow you to serve me. Zi Xinglian's words left Zhou Tianji beside her stunned. What the hell? This old woman has taken a liking to Xiao Tian, such a bewitching and cheap character, even seducing our lord. Another person who was dragged into this, Yuan Ba, also shows a face of sympathy at this moment. This is our fate as body cultivators, Xiao Tian. Even if your physical realm is higher than 10th level, you're still useless in front of them. Little did they know, Xiao Tian is incredibly irritated at the moment. It's just too noisy here. While he is good at controlling his powers, controlling his senses in such a noisy environment is challenging. The next second, Xiao Tian suddenly shows a ferocious look and shouts, Can you stop making noise? Xiao Tian suddenly loses his temper and punches around him. The surrounding chaotic space shatters with one punch, and the whole world falls silent in an instant. Both Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoshuan's jaws almost drop to the ground. What the hell is this? Is this really a body cultivator? Floating beside him, Xiao Yuer quickly massages Xiao Tian's shoulders, her voice somewhat shaky. Daddy, don't be angry. Let Xiao Yuer massage your shoulders. Long Chiu Dao, who was previously enjoying the scenery, also hurriedly takes out tea and snacks from the holy dragon relic, comes in front of Xiao Tian and respectfully says, Sir Xiao, I've been negligent due to abandoning my physical body and the erosion of time. I forgot to prepare tea and snacks. My apologies. Xiao Yuer and Long Chiu Dao awkwardly console him, and Xiao Tian finally feels a bit better. The two sneak glances at each other, both seeing the fear in each other's eyes. Daddy Xiao Tian, this is too terrifying. Yuan Ba, who originally felt a kindred spirit, now feels the aura emanating from Xiao Tian, as if he is a mighty dragon, and he himself is not even worth an ant. Yuan Ba is completely dumbfounded. What did he just say? What is the fate of body cultivators? What even is a body cultivator, compared to the guy before him, who doesn't use a shred of spiritual energy, relying solely on physical strength, and who basically shaved the southern wilderness realm bald? What are we? Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji are shaking uncontrollably, feeling for the first time a profound sense of unknown terror. At this moment, Xiao Tian sips the tea brewed by Long Chiu Dao, enjoying his daughter's shoulder massage. Now that the surroundings have quieted down, his irritable mood finally eases a bit. He turns his head to the woman beside him. It was too noisy earlier. I couldn't hear what you were saying. Say it again. Zi Xinglian looks in terror at the area obliterated by Xiao Tian's punch, then quickly puts on a flattering smile upon hearing him speak. This mistress was just introducing myself to you. My name is Zi Xinglian. I was wondering, do you need a maid to serve tea? My tea skills are quite good. Xiao Tian motions for Long Chiu Dao to refill his cup, seeming somewhat surprised at Zi Xinglian's words. Why are there women everywhere trying to latch onto him? Little does he know. Although Zi Xinglian is smiling, she is inwardly cursing Zi Ruoyan's mother. That lucky Shuaruyan. How can she be so fortunate? She runs away from her marriage to this remote place, not only meeting a husband with an awakened lineage of human imperial blood, but now also gaining a terrifyingly powerful son-in-law. Xiao Tian furrows his brow, looking around in confusion. Introduction. It was a bit noisy here earlier with all the fireworks, so I didn't hear clearly. Why don't you say it again? Hearing this, Xiao Yuer, who is by Xiao Tian's side, is not pleased. Daddy, don't listen to her nonsense. I heard her clearly. Zi Xinglian, who was about to speak, 
is preemptively exposed by Xiao Yuer, and her face instantly fills with bewilderment and terror. Xiao Yuer points at her and says emphatically, Daddy, this woman, she's lusting after you. Right, dragon mom old man? Long Chiodao, who is carefully pouring the tea, is startled by Xiao Yuer's words, looks up and sighs, his face full of resignation. My little ancestor, I'd prefer to be invisible right now. Why are you involving me? Ah, it's so hard being a dragon. But since he was named by Xiao Yuer, even if reluctant, Long Chiodao has to tell the truth. Sir, to put it simply, Xiao Yuer is right. This woman indeed wants you. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian stares thoughtfully at Zi Xinlian. This woman really wants to study me, doesn't she? She's interested in my invincible capabilities. Upon hearing Xiao Yuer and Wang Chiodao's words, Zi Xinlian feels both angry and anxious. This darn girl, daring to ruin my plans. But then again, from what I've seen, he does have affections for those two women, and they for him. So, Xiao Tian should be a lecherous sort. With this thought, Zi Xinlian suddenly makes up her mind. Pretending to speak sweetly, she says, Mr. Xiao, what your precious daughter said is not wrong. For an exceptional man like you, what woman wouldn't be moved? She has quite a bit of confidence in her own looks and figure. Xiao Tian sighs, and puts on an I'm so handsome, what can I do? Expression. What you're saying does make some sense. Excellence is hard to hide. Seeing his reaction, Zi Xinlian secretly rejoices, thinking she's got Xiao Tian hooked. Serving as a concubine to such a powerful man like Xiao Tian wouldn't be too bad. As she thinks this, she licks her lips. At this moment, Xiao Tian leans in closer, and slowly asks, I do have something I want to ask you. Your surname is the same as Zi Ruoyan's. What exactly is your background? Zi Xinlian lowers her head and smiles, seemingly somewhat helpless. I'm from the Zi family, and a descendant of the human emperor. I suppose you could say, I'm family with Zi Ruoyan. Xiao Tian stares intently at her, asking again, if that's the case, what brings you to this southern wilderness realm? Upon hearing this, Zi Xinlian hesitates. She isn't sure whether to make up an excuse, especially since her relationship with Zi Ruoyan's mother is not good. Seeing her hesitation, Xiao Tian steps even closer, staring at her intently. Now, tell the truth. It has to be said. Xiao Tian at this moment, instantly charms his way into Zi Xinlian's heart. Her emotions are in turmoil, but she keeps reminding herself, no, no, I can't be infatuated. Since lying won't work, she decides to speak frankly, hoping to win his favor. I refuse to believe I can't charm him. Thinking of this, Zi Xinlian slightly parts her red lips, softly breathing as she lightly lifts her skirt, putting on a shy and adorable look. Mr. Xiao, this mistress will tell you everything. At this moment, Zi Xinlian is extremely confident. How could she not bewitch him with such allure? Originally, the Zi family, where Zi Xinlian is from, had a good relationship with Zi Ruoyan's mother's Shui family. Zi Xinlian also had a good relationship with Zi Ruoyan's mother. So, she was asked to come to the southern wilderness realm to look after Zi Ruoyan. But who could have thought? The moment Zi Xinlian arrived, she discovered Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji's conspiracy. Learning about the heavenly furnace and the holy dragon relic, she couldn't contain her greed and took the lead in the scheme. As she speaks, Zi Xinlian suddenly covers her face and bursts into tears. It's all my fault. Seeing this, Xiao Tian remains unmoved, a glimmer of wisdom flashing in his eyes as he mutters. So that's how it is. Turns out you're my mother-in-law's good friend. Now, I ask you, how are my in-laws doing? Why didn't they come themselves? Hearing this, Zi Xinlian sighs softly. As it turns out, Zi Ruoyan's mother, Shui Ruyan, and her family have a low status within the Shui family. If it weren't for the esteemed Purple Emperor awakening the true bloodline of the human race, they would still be exiled in the southern wilderness realm, and her children, due to innate defects, are not allowed to be brought back. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian becomes curious. Innate defects? Zi Xinlian nods slightly. Yes, this barren realm has incomplete rules, and living beings cannot sense the rules of heaven and earth. Shui Ruyan had no way to oppose the head of the Shui family, and thus she asked for my help. Hearing this, Xiao Tian finally has an epiphany. No wonder Zhongling and the others have such poor foundations. They were born in the southern wilderness realm, and cannot sense the rules of heaven and earth, lacking innately. Also, Zi Ruoyan's two older brothers couldn't awaken their bloodlines either. Wait, he suddenly thinks. How did Zi Ruoyan awaken hers? Well, we'll take it one step at a time. Xiao Tian puts away his puzzled expression, looking at Zi Xinlian with a cold face. Your willingness to confess the whole story shows that you have come to a clear understanding of your mistakes. Hearing Xiao Tian say this, Zi Xinlian's originally worried face turns excited. She thought she was finally off the hook for death. However, Xiao Tian continues. Then, you can go ahead and end yourself now. Zi Xinlian's expression freezes in an instant, feeling as if she's been struck by lightning, her mind completely shutting down. After a long hesitation, she carefully asks Xiao Tian, Mr. Xiao, are you joking with this mistress? Xiao Tian coldly shakes his head, his tone still firm. I'm not joking. Zi Xinlian quickly promises, Mr. Xiao, this mistress can serve you tea, pour you water, and serve you well. Enough. Zi Xinlian is abruptly interrupted by Xiao Tian. He points at Zi Xinlian somewhat angrily. Just now, I sacrificed my attractiveness and purposely faced you at a flattering angle, which should have pleased you. And now, you're actually still talking like this. You're 
such a greedy woman, stunned and speechless, she really wants to ask, what do you mean I'm greedy, and you sacrificed your attractiveness, did you get it backward, Xiao Tian pays no attention to her astonishment, only offering some disappointed explanation, my mother-in-law initially trusted you and asked for your help, but you became greedy, leading to the death of my two uncles, now, all I'm asking is for you to end yourself as an apology, and yet you're still trying to push it further, what has the world come to, people are malicious, morals have decayed, oppression is everywhere, schemes are everywhere, Z Xinlian is left speechless, wanting to say something but not knowing how to begin, she can only silently comfort herself, don't get angry, don't ruin your own health, just then, Xiao Yuer suddenly points at her and speaks, dad, she probably has even more malicious intentions, Xiao Tian turns to look at Xiao Yuer, with a serious expression he asks, what do you mean, dad, think about it, she's been intentionally trying to seduce you since earlier, wanting to stay by your side, her behavior is quite promiscuous, if our mothers found out, wouldn't they get jealous, and then, when both of our mothers give you a headache with their bickering, she would use her gentleness to trap you, how would you explain this to grandmother then, this is clearly her premeditated revenge, Xiao Yuer speaks with a worried look on his face, while Xiao Tian gasps in astonishment, feeling a sense of fear, no wonder they say women are as unfathomable as the ocean's depths, only a woman can truly understand another woman, Xiao Tian sharply looks at Zi Xinlian, pointing at her and indignantly shouting, moreover, my daughter is not even a full-fledged woman, she's like one-sixth of a woman, so, one can only imagine your true intentions, which are probably even more terrifying, it seems you cannot be spared, as he says this, Xiao Tian's eyes turn cold, he raises his hand, ready to slap her, Zi Xinlian's face is filled with disbelief and resentment, can both of you get any more ridiculous, I'm just trying to save my own life, who taught you to have such wild imaginations, if someone said you two aren't actually father and daughter, I wouldn't believe it even if I were a ghost, unbelievably, Zi Xinlian refuses to accept her fate quietly, she uses spatial magic to obscure her figure, and hides within the folds of space, system puppy quickly informs Xiao Tian, master, Zi Xinlian is now hiding in a spatial layer, I've locked onto her for you, she can't escape, following puppy's guidance, Xiao Tian soon locates Zi Xinlian's position, his attack automatically locks onto her, then, Xiao Tian smiles slightly, today, I'll play the role of a good person one more time, I'll give you a chance to repent and be reborn, go reincarnate in peace, as he says this, Xiao Tian increases the power of his palm strike, aiming it towards the locked on position, within the space where Zi Xinlian is hiding, the layers explode one after the other, finally, after a scream, Zi Xinlian is completely eradicated, Xiao Yuer makes a face at her, evil woman, serves you right, beside him, Long Chiodao suddenly recalls his own corpse heart demon, before it died, it probably felt as frustrated as Zi Xinlian, right, Lord Xiao truly is terrifying, now, the only ones remaining on the scene are, the trembling Yuan Ba, Zhou Tianji, and Eastern Gao Xian, Xiao Tian turns his head to look, Yuan Ba immediately asks, is the upper limit of us body cultivators really this powerful, or are you just a special case, Xiao Tian sizes him up for a moment, then suddenly smiles, I have a way for you to break your own limits, to reach even higher goals, to become a thousand times more powerful than you are now, Yuan Ba is so excited that he's somewhat at a loss for words, really, is it really possible, can you let me see it, even if I die right after, it's okay, Xiao Tian shakes his head, very seriously tells him, no, you can't, at this, Yuan Ba becomes frantic, this is his life's obsession, he looks disheartened at Xiao Tian, why, I just want to see the future of us body cultivators before I die, Xiao Tian, with a trace of anger on his face, retorts, what does the future of body cultivators have to do with you, you're not a body cultivator, you're just a bully who preys on the weak, you've been helping Eastern Gao Xian and Zhou Tianji to oppress the weak, all under the guise of breaking through the limits of the world, what kind of body cultivator are you, Xiao Tian's words hit Yuan Ba like a hammer, striking deep into his heart, gritting his teeth, he trembles a bit, I, too, am working towards the future of body cultivators, no matter how hard I try, I can't break that limit, saying this, he suddenly becomes emotional, tearing off his outer garment, pointing at his wounds and shouting, body cultivators need to keep breaking their own limits, you, who came from a higher realm, probably have no idea what I've been through to achieve breakthroughs, suddenly, Yuan Ba's words come to an abrupt halt, beside him, Xiao Yuer covers her mouth with her hands, eyes widening, unable to hold back her sympathetic cry, daddy, it's as if Yuan Ba's words are choked off, behind him, Eastern Gao Xian and Zhou Tianji, also inhale sharply, before them, Xiao Tian has already taken off his upper garment, revealing a muscular chest, only, it's covered with countless scars, looking incredibly gruesome, Xiao Tian looks at Yuan Ba, his face calm and indifferent, you always say, this is the fate of body cultivators, but when faced with difficulties, you didn't rise to the challenge, but chose to flee, you gave up the possibility of advancing, reaching out to oppress the powerless commoners instead, that's the behavior of a coward, saying this, Xiao Tian puts his clothes back on and continues, I know a young girl, even though she lost both parents and had her arm chopped off, and was forced to beg, she never lost hope in life, and you, you're not even as good as that little girl, Yuan 
Han Ba remains silent for a long time, finally smiling as he sheds two lines of tears, muttering as he shakes his head uncontrollably. You're right, I'm not worthy. Saying this, Yuan Ba suddenly lifts his hand. A frightening power gathers in his palm. The next second, he smashes his fist into his own chest, crushing his own heart. He chooses to atone with his death. Xiao Tian looks at the lifeless Yuan Ba lying on the ground, silent for a long while. In some ways, he's very much like me, someone committed to martial arts. After a long pause, Xiao Tian exhales slowly, turns to look at Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji, a signature smile appearing on his face. Why the long faces? Lighten up. After all, I'm not a bad guy. You don't have to be so scared. Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian can't stop trembling, their faces dripping with cold sweat. Hearing Xiao Tian's words, they can only muster a smile uglier than crying, muttering to themselves, Yes, you're a good person, just haven't seen a good person as terrifying as you. Xiao Tian chuckles as he wraps his arms around their shoulders. You don't have to be so tense. The main culprit, Zi Xinlian, has already been brought to justice. You guys are at best accomplices. Heaven is merciful, so I've decided to give you both a valuable opportunity. Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian exchange glances, forcing another ugly smile. Is this guy really that kind-hearted? Well, let's see. He is called the Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. After all, Zhou Tianji, with a glimmer of hope, carefully asks, Lord Xiao, do you think we still have a chance? Xiao Tian smiles and casually explains, anyone can have a chance to turn over a new leaf, especially the two of you. After all, what Zi Xinlian wanted was the Holy Dragon Relic, while you two wanted to plunder the national fate and exploit the common people. With such grave mistakes, how can you not try to gain everyone's forgiveness? Hearing this, both men suddenly feel that something doesn't quite add up. Cold sweat breaks out on their foreheads. This doesn't sound good. What does he mean by gain everyone's forgiveness? Xiao Tian ignores their thoughts, suddenly turning to ask Long Chiu Dao, is there a good way to make them unable to resist? Long Chiu Dao quickly nods, yes, his expression is very serious, even lacking any sycophancy. But as his words fall, a golden rope appears in his hand. This is binding rope. With a wave of Long Chiu Dao's hand, the golden rope flies out like a coiling snake. Before they can react, they're enveloped and bound by the binding rope. Immediately, Xiao Tian quickly points his finger, landing precisely on the two men's Dantian. Their Dantian shatters, and their cultivation levels rapidly decline like a receding tide. Xiao Tian nods in satisfaction. Very good, excellent. Then he turns to ask Long Chiu Dao again. If an ordinary person stabs them with a sword, is there a way for them to quickly heal and recover? Long Chiu Dao thinks seriously. It shouldn't be difficult. It's just a stab. After all, Xiao Tian ponders. What if they're stabbed or cut at intervals? Can they be kept in optimal condition? Long Chiu Dao considers this carefully. If the healing elixir is turned into a liquid, and the weapon is dipped in it before striking, it seems possible. Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian are almost frightened out of their wits. What happened to being supreme benevolent? How can you discuss such horrifying matters so calmly with this old man? Upon hearing that the method is feasible, Xiao Tian turns to tell the two. If this can be done, then you have your chance to repent. For your own selfish reasons, you've taken so many innocent lives, so let them take matters into their own hands. We will spare your lives. The two men feel dizzy and disoriented, falling to the ground in horror. What does he mean by let the common people take matters into their own hands? There are over three billion people in the Great Flame Dynasty alone, and with the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, that's at least 20 billion. If each person takes a turn, even if the old man can keep us from dying, our souls will surely die. Long Chiu Dao also realizes this. This would take too much time, Lord Xiao. It might even take years. The two men kneeling on the ground quickly chime in. Yes, yes, whether we live or die isn't important. Don't inconvenience yourselves. Xiao Tian waves his hand, signaling them to calm down. It's okay, take it slow. Redemption and turning over a new leaf is a long process. He then tells Long Chiu Dao, just for these few years, you'll need to work extra hard to make sure they don't die. Long Chiu Dao's lips twitch. He looks at the two with a pitiful expression. You've really brought this upon yourselves. At his gaze, the two men's emotional defenses collapse entirely, begging Xiao Tian to kill them and put them out of their misery. Xiao Tian shows a gentle smile. Really? You've been refining living beings, but never offered them a swift end. How can you have the audacity to ask for a quick death? Remember, what you need to do now is live on and atone for your sins. This is all for your own good. The two men tremble all over, utterly despondent. They suddenly feel that the cruelest words they've ever heard are this is for your own good. God damn it, this is for our own good. Shou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian are tucked under Long Chiu Dao's arms, closely following behind Xiao Tian, and Xiao Tian, walking ahead, prepares to take them back to the Great Flame Dynasty. Just then, a surprised voice suddenly comes from ahead. Brother Xiao. Xiao Tian looks up abruptly, and the next second sees an extravagantly curvaceous woman, with a commanding aura crashing into his face. It's none other than the demon clan Empress Luo Feng Yuan. She excitedly pulls Xiao Tian into her arms, while Xiao Tian helplessly flails his arms in the air. This woman actually body checked him. Xiao Tian struggles to break free from this damned restraint, as he can't breathe at all. In his mind he's shouting, someone save me, I'm going to die. Fortunately, at that 
moment, Z Royan arrives and grabs the collar of Luo from Yuan's dress, pulling her away. Are you trying to suffocate him? The saved Xiao Tian gasps for air, his face filled with relief as if he's survived a calamity. Thank you, your majesty, for saving my life. If you had arrived a few steps later, I wouldn't have died at the enemy's hands, but at the hands of my own demoness here. Z Royan looks at the uninjured Xiao Tian, and her worry finally lessens considerably. She softly reassures him, all right, stop talking, as long as you're fine. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan glares at Luo Feng Yuan, always so careless, and you want to act like an empress? Luo Feng Yuan scratches her head awkwardly, wasn't I just too anxious? Immediately after, Luo Feng Yuan's expression turns excited, clenching her fists together as she asks Xiao Tian, Brother Xiao, where is that old blonde? This concubine will help you blow her up. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan suddenly chops her on the head, her face full of anger. Luo Feng Yuan hurriedly explains, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about that old woman. Zi Ruoyan, however, points to Long Chiodao standing behind her and laughs. Do I get the feeling you did that on purpose? Didn't you see these two unconscious people? Doesn't that mean the situation has been resolved? Luo Feng Yuan pulls a slight smile, squinting her eyes in an I don't care manner. You're so strange, your majesty. Why would you tarnish someone's reputation out of the blue? Seeing that the crisis is now averted, the two empresses, who had been fighting side by side, now start to lock horns again. Seeing this, Xiao Tian suddenly starts coughing violently. Both of you, wait a moment, he says before suddenly falling backward. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan get a big scare, and quickly support him from both sides, their faces full of terrified expressions. Xiao Tian waves his hand and speaks in a strained voice. I'm fine, it's just overexertion. Although I didn't use the ancient god clan's forbidden technique earlier, it was still a form of my power burst. Though there are no lingering worries, I still need a few days of rest to recover. Sorry for making you worried. Zi Ruoyan quickly shakes her head, her face full of emotion. You've already done very well. You gave me a great surprise. King of Hell, Xiao Tian blushes, not wanting to recall this embarrassing moment any longer. Luo Feng Yuan looks at Xiao Tian with utmost admiration. Exactly, exactly. I never thought Brother Xiao could be so amazing. Could a body cultivator also be this strong? Xiao Tian immediately puts on a humble face and scratches his head awkwardly. Well, I just got lucky and found a small trick to break the 10th tier limit. Zi Ruoyan suddenly looks at the desolate scenery around them. Let's not talk about this now. This isn't a good place for chatting. Let's continue this at home. Luo Feng Yuan nods her head frantically on the side, her face full of a happy smile. Yes, let's continue at home. Xiao Tian looks at both of them somewhat surprised, and can't help but repeat their words. Go home? He's a bit stunned, as this is the first time in his life that he's heard these words. He feels his heart pounding rapidly, quite peculiarly. So having a home is such a wonderful feeling. At this moment, Xiao Tian leads everyone back to the Guardian Domain, returning to the Great Flame Dynasty. The citizens all burst into enthusiastic applause and cheers, shouting their thanks. Xiao Tian gives them a broad grin, waves in their direction, and shouts back, you're welcome. Meanwhile, within the sea of consciousness, the soul of Xiao Tian reveals a slight smile. System Puppy floats beside him, looking at him curiously. In the originally dull sea of consciousness, a faint glimmer of light suddenly appears, brightening the dark space a little. Puppy looks at the light falling onto Xiao Tian's soul, and a shallow smile appears on its face. Although it's just a little light, it's enough to warm things up, isn't it, master? The walls and fortresses constructed to defend against nightmare shards and negative emotions also suddenly expand to double their size. As if everything is moving in a positive direction, Xiao Tian returns to the palace, lying on his custom-made spirit stone chair, closing his eyes in relaxation. Zhong Ling comes rushing over with fruit, prince. Everything is ready. Without opening his eyes, Xiao Tian waves his hand. All right, you may go. Practice your skills at the side. It must be because you didn't practice diligently that you weren't able to contribute during this crisis. You all need to reflect on this. Zhong Ling goes to the side and sighs helplessly. It's not our fault. The enemy was too strong. Long Chiodao timely hands over a cup of tea. Lord Xiao. Xiao Tian sips the tea with his eyes closed, and instantly, a look of bliss spreads across his face. This tea is beyond words. Absolutely perfect. Long Chiodao hurriedly responds with modesty. Xiao Tian seems to suddenly remember something. Right, Long Chiodao, you served beside the human emperor in your past life, right? Did he run into any trouble? Long Chiodao shakes his head. It's been too long. As you know, I've discarded my physical body, left with only this incomplete and damaged spiritual form. I vaguely remember. It was a great catastrophe that nearly wiped out all the races, but with Lord Zhao's capabilities, when the catastrophe comes, self-preservation won't be difficult. Xiao Tian recalls when he killed an antagonist, who had said, the great horror that led a generation's great emperor to sacrifice himself is about to re-emerge. We must improve our abilities at all costs, to survive. Don't kill me, I have a lot of information I can tell you. You dog. Xiao Tian fiddles with his cup and thinks, according to what Zi Xinlian said before her death, the great catastrophe will come again. What a coincidence. Do you think this catastrophe is targeting me? Long Chiodao is taken aback, his hand holding the teapot shakes, nearly dropping it. Though at a loss for words, he still
still tells Xiao Tian, Lord Xiao, you're so kind and righteous. I don't think anyone would harm you without a reason. Xiao Tian shakes his head in disagreement. That's hard to say. Since I came here, in such a short time, I've been schemed against several times and faced numerous dangers. If not for my little bit of brute strength, I would have been long dead by now. By the way, where's Xiao Yuer? Xiao Tian looks around, but doesn't see her. Long Chiodao quickly explains. She went to find the two empresses. Ever since she became the artifact spirit of the National Seal Jade Stamp, she likes to stay by the side of the two empresses. Just then, speak of the devil, Xiao Yuer bursts in, stops abruptly in front of Xiao Tian, and shouts, Daddy, they are fighting again. Xiao Tian isn't particularly concerned, and calmly asks what the reason is this time. Xiao Yuer says earnestly, they are arguing over who should be the chief wife. Z Empress says it should be whoever is smarter, while Luo Empress says it should be whoever is bigger. Yet her little face shows some confusion. Xiao Tian has to ask, what are you thinking? Xiao Yuer shakes her head in slight confusion. Daddy, why did Luo Empress say something about her being big? Hearing this, Xiao Tian, caught off guard, suddenly chokes on his tea, but can only laugh and tell Xiao Yuer, well, you're still young, you'll understand when you're older. Xiao Yuer obediently nods. All right then. Suddenly she turns her head toward the door. Mom is coming. Being the national seal Jade Stamp's artifact spirit, she naturally can sense Zi Ruan's approach in advance. The two women walk in side by side, sweat on their foreheads and expressions of dissatisfaction on their faces. Obviously, neither has gained the upper hand from their earlier argument. At this moment, Zi Ruan and Luo Feng Yuan each sit on one side of Xiao Tian, sulking. Xiao Tian dares not move, when suddenly, Zi Ruan reaches out and grabs Xiao Tian's teacup, tilting her head back to drink the remaining tea. Xiao Tian is stunned. What is she up to now? Luo Feng Yuan is so angry she nearly grinds her back teeth. She snatches the teapot from Wang Chiodao's hand, startling him, then takes out an empty teacup and angrily pours herself a cup, her expression as if daring anyone to say she can't. Next, Luo Feng Yuan puts on a charming appearance and coquettishly tells Xiao Tian, Brother Xiao, have some tea. Xiao Tian still dares not move. Luo Feng Yuan looks challengingly at Zi Ruoyan and laughs. Zi Bon, see, you still have a lot to learn. Zi Ruoyan snorts, rolls her eyes, and dismissively says, childish. Then she lies down on Xiao Tian, I'm tired. Luo Feng Yuan follows suit, lying on the other side. I'm tired too. Xiao Tian is squeezed between them, almost in tears. Can you not involve me in your argument? This is so uncomfortable. On the side, Xiao Yuer and Wang Chiodao are covering their mouths, stifling their laughter. Just then, Lu Yan enters to report, Your Majesties, Prime Minister Zhong has arrived. She barely finishes speaking when, Zhong Yangming bursts in, Your Majesties, this is bad. The sky has cracked open. Zi Ruoyan is confused. What do you mean? Explain. Zhong Yangming catches his breath. Just now, cracks started appearing in the sky in various places. People are panicking. Outside the Imperial City just now, Zhong Yangming can't finish. What a cracking sound is heard overhead. Everyone looks up in surprise, and lo and behold, a crack has appeared in the sky as well. Xiao Tian is stunned for a moment, then turns to Long Chiodao with a serious expression. What is going on? Long Chiodao opens his mouth wide. This, this. Xiao Tian interrupts with a warning. If you dare say you've lost your memory, Long Chiodao quickly thinks. The Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm is collapsing. This means that the Sacred Dragon's juvenile period has safely passed. Although you're not the Sacred Dragon, Empresses, you are the ones this realm is protecting. Long Chiodao explains, but Zhong Yangming suddenly interrupts. No, Mr. Dragon Mound, may I ask you something? Go ahead. Long Chiodao invites. Zhong Yangming respectfully asks, will the Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm switch its protection target in the middle of its term? It won't. Once the Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm is formed, it will not change the individual it protects. Long Chiodao answers. Hearing this, Zhong Yangming nods and turns to Zi Ruoyan. So it appears there is a problem with the Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm's protection of Supreme Emperor, esteemed Purple Emperor. Long Chiodao steps forward to add, each Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm has different rules. Only the sacrificed dead dragon that created it knows the criteria for its disappearance. Xiao Tian interrupts. Could it be that father-in-law broke through a boundary in a secret realm? Long Chiodao nods. It should be so. Their conversation leaves everyone else in a stunned silence. Zi Ruoyan curiously asks. What secret realm were you talking about? Xiao Tian suddenly realizes he has been a bit too relaxed recently. He had forgotten to mention the matters about his father-in-law and mother-in-law that Zi Xinlian had told him. I don't know if I'll get scolded for saying it now, he thinks. Taking a deep breath to calm himself, he straightens his face and starts explaining. Zi Xinlian has a deep connection with your mother, and in order to get accurate information, I had to seduce her using my looks. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan is literally petrified. What the fuck? What did I just hear? He seduced her with his looks? Luo Feng Yuan is also quite shocked and quickly rushes up to ask, Xiao brother, what did that old woman do to you? I knew it couldn't have been that easy to deal with a level 17 individual. Xiao Tian sighs. She saw me at my most handsome, and for a very long time at that. I even had to strike various poses and angles for her. He then shares the information he gathered. Esteemed Purple Emperor 
Emperor and Shuo Ruyin went into a secret realm to focus on their cultivation, aiming to rebel against the head of the Shuo family. They've probably already. Long Chiodao, who knows the whole story, isn't really listening. You're right, your sacrifice is enormous. You're such a good person. He thinks sarcastically. Zi Ruoyan just sighs. Is that it? Luo Feng Yuan thinks to herself. What a relief. I thought he'd done something even worse. Xiao Tian can't sit still any longer. What's with your reactions? I'm so handsome, and she looked at me up close for so long. She got such a bargain. Why don't you all care? Can I get some reaction here? Lu Yan suddenly smiles. Well, Prince, we've also been looking at you for a long time. How does that count? Xiao Tian dismisses it. Old ladies and kids don't count. Lu Yan's eyes turn red, nearly exploding with anger. Who is he calling an old lady? So infuriating. And I can't even beat him up, which makes it even worse. Zhong Yang Ming watches the scene and shakes his head in satisfaction. In his view, the prince is clearly changing the subject. He must have forgotten about the matter of their royal highness's parents. With that in mind, Zhong Yang Ming steps forward to ask Xiao Tian, Prince, although this request may make you uncomfortable, please try to recall what Zi Xinlian told you when you used your good looks to seduce her. Was it related to the Supreme Emperor? Hearing this, Xiao Tian gives a mental thumbs up to Zhong Yang Ming. Well done, heavy cavalry. You really understand me, as expected of my family chef. Subsequently, Xiao Tian puts on a face like he's trying hard to remember. Initially, Zi Xinlian mentioned that my in-laws went into a secret realm to break free from the control of the Shua family. However, they lost contact with the outside world while inside. Then he recounts the whole story one by one. Zi Ruoyan suddenly starts, then her face fills with rage. This Zi Xinlian is nothing but a beast. My mother trusted her, and this is what she does in return. Luo Feng Yuan pats her on the shoulder to comfort her. Anyway, she has already been dealt with by Xiao brother. Consider it a comfort to your late brother's spirit. Zhong Yang Ming, meanwhile, is calmly analyzing. If that's the case, the situation doesn't look very good for the Supreme Emperor and the Empress Dowager. Thinking this, he turns to Zi Ruoyan. Your Majesty, regardless, we must find and establish contact with them. Zi Ruoyan nods in agreement. Exactly. We have to search for my father and mother. Moreover, we can no longer continue to stay in this protected realm. We must move. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan turns to Xiao Tian. By the way, Xiao brother, which world does the Zi family belong to? In which territory? In which Shue family are we talking about? Xiao Tian is momentarily stumped. Ah, this. He glances around, wanting to complain in his heart. I'm not familiar with this world either. Aren't you asking the wrong person? No, I have to answer in a way that hides my ignorance. So, Xiao Tian puts on a mysterious demeanor and says seriously, the Zi family descended from the human emperor and the Shue family that is in friendly relations with them. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan is also stumped. What a good answer. Maybe you shouldn't answer next time. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan's reaction, Zi Ruoyan is somewhat puzzled. What's the matter? Shouldn't the Zi family with the title of human emperor descendants be easy to find? At this moment, one of Luo Feng Yuan's personal guards suddenly explains, Great Flame Empress, you may not know this, but in the primordial demon kingdom, there are 17 Zi families claiming to be descendants of the human emperor. Zi Ruoyan turns her head in astonishment, speechless. Are you serious? Another guard steps up. Even though much has been lost from that era, there is one thing that all races know. The human emperor was very amorous. He had 3,000 wives, each of whom was incredibly beautiful and captivating. Good heavens, Xiao Tian is dumbfounded. So the human emperor was really something, huh? Yes. And each of the human emperor's 3,000 wives had dozens of children. Luo Feng Yuan adds with a smile. So in each realm or world, there are legitimate descendants of the human emperor from the Zi family, no fewer than dozens, if not a hundred. As for the Shue family, they should be descendants of the great virtue emperor, one of the four emperors under the human emperor. They, too, are everywhere. Xiao Tian can't help but roll his eyes. What a human emperor, and what a great virtue emperor. You guys really have good stamina. Meanwhile, in a very distant secret realm, various forces are controlling palace-like spiritual artifacts that slowly float in the void. A young man can't help but worry. I wonder how the young lady and the others are doing inside the secret realm. Hearing this, another man snorts. I really don't know why they chose to take Shua Ruyin and her useless husband with them. The young man quickly gestures for him to lower his voice. Be careful what you say. Shuo Ruyin's husband has the bloodline of the human emperor. At the same time, inside the secret realm, a woman stands atop a mountain, fending off various attacks. However, waves continuously flow around her, as if a large sea suspended in the air is blocking the attackers. Another woman can't help but loudly question, how can you not support your family but instead assist that man? What on earth is so charming about him that you're so bewitched to protect him? Shuo Ruyin lets out a cold laugh. Are you out of your mind? He's my husband. Who else would I protect if not him? Seeing this, the man can only turn his focus towards esteemed purple emperor, attempting to provoke him. So, he points at esteemed purple emperor and angrily scolds, hiding behind a woman. Do you even consider yourself a man? I'm embarrassed for you. Do you have any shame? Esteemed purple emperor simply ignores him, continuing to eat his divine flame vermilion fruit. The woman, seeing this, becomes even more frustrated. You're a practitioner of the ice path. Why 
are you eating so enthusiastically? Suddenly, a steamed purple emperor retorts while chewing on the fruit. How much is face worth these days? Fine, I have no shame. I live off a woman. What are you going to do about it? Not satisfied? Then find one for yourself. He grows increasingly irate. If I hadn't been trapped in a turtle shell since I was young, I would have destroyed you wastes long ago. Having said this, a steamed purple emperor swallows the divine flame vermilion fruit. The next second, he actually breaks through to the next realm. Looking at everyone present, a steamed purple emperor snorts in his heart. Such a bunch of spoiled wastes. I must become stronger and take control of my own destiny, rescuing my in-laws from the Shua family. And then we can go back and find our children as a whole family. Shua Rian looks back at her husband, grips her spear tightly, and mutters, My husband, grow stronger quickly. Who knows how our children are doing? Saying this, Shua Rian picks up her weapon and charges at the two people. Meanwhile, in the Great Flame Dynasty, Long Chiu Dao is still narrating. In that era, humanity was declining. The human emperor's intention was to leave behind strong bloodlines that could at least hold up a piece of sky when they grew up. He didn't expect the result to be too effective. The three people listening feel awkward, so the biggest obstacle to the empress finding her parents is that their ancestor, the human emperor, had too many offspring? Long Chiu Dao slaps his head, trying to recall the past. Back then, there was no title of human emperor. He was just a powerful individual among humans. But what was the big war about? Was it related to the great catastrophe? I really can't remember. Seeing this, Xiao Tian shows a helpless expression. Fine, if your memory isn't working, stop slapping your head. You might break it before you remember anything. Long Chiu Dao can only give an awkward smile to cover up his embarrassment. At this moment, Zhong Yang Ming suddenly stands up, spreads his hands, and says, We definitely have to find the Supreme Emperor and the Empress Dowager. Although it's like finding a needle in a haystack, we can still try. Turning to look at Zi Ruoyan, Zhong Yang Ming adds, Your Majesty, the most pressing matter at hand is that this protective domain is about to shatter. What should we do about the common people? Zi Ruoyan lowers her head in deep thought. After a long pause, she suddenly looks at Luo Feng Yuan. Why not use the war furnace to evacuate everyone? Luo Feng Yuan shakes her head. That won't work. It's not big enough. We might end up crushing people. Long Chiu Dao strokes his beard, muttering to himself, the holy dragon relic has its own world inside where we could take the people. There might not be enough time. It's too rushed. He looks up at the sky, noting the changes. This protective domain will likely shatter in a few days. Zi Ruoyan grows anxious, sweat dripping down. A few days? That's way too tight. Dragon Mound Elder, is there really no other way? Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly speaks with excitement. Wait, I have a solution. Zi Ruoyan looks at him with a worried face. Lord Xiao, you haven't recovered from your injuries. Let's think of another way. Don't harm yourself. Xiao Tian smiles, an extremely satisfied smile. Your Majesty, are you worried about me? The moment he says this, Zi Ruoyan blushes and stammers, unable to speak. Luo Feng Yuan takes the opportunity to interrupt. Brother Xiao, the Great Flame Empress is only worried about the people. How could she worry about? Her words are cut off as Zi Ruoyan covers her mouth to prevent her from continuing. Zi Ruoyan defends herself. I'm not worried. I just can't bear it. Xiao Tian stares at his first wife. This occasionally Tsundra Empress. Is she trying to aggressively flirt now? How interesting. Because the protective domain is about to break, Xiao Tian thinks of a way to protect the people. However, Zi Ruoyan assumes he'll have to burn his life force to do it. Don't worry. I'm just offering a suggestion. Using a tool. The main person who will act is Long Chiu Dao. Xiao Tian reassures her. Hearing this, Zi Ruoyan, while still covering Luo Feng Yuan's mouth, turns to Long Chiu Dao. Then I'll have to trouble Elder Dragon Mound. Please keep an eye on Lord Xiao and make sure he doesn't act recklessly. Long Chiu Dao smiles and nods at Zi Ruoyan. You are the existence among the human emperor's descendants who awaken the true human emperor bloodline. You don't have to be so polite with an old man like me. Zi Ruoyan shakes her head earnestly. You're an elder. No need for modesty. Lord Xiao will be in your care. Long Chiu Dao feels awkward. You should be telling him to watch out for me, not the other way around. But rest assured, Xiao Tian waves at everyone, then we'll be going. Before leaving, he doesn't forget to pat Xiao Yuer's head. Stay and play with your mothers. Daddy has some important things to do. Xiao Yuer, who was laughing at Long Chiu Dao's antics a moment ago, obediently nods her head when her dad speaks. Okay. Immediately, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao turn into two streaks of light shooting into the sky. Only after they've disappeared from sight does Zi Ruoyan turn to Luo Feng Yuan. Luo Feng Yuan points at Zi Ruoyan, angrily questioning, You're cheating. Zi Ruoyan chuckles softly and pours herself a cup of tea. How can this be considered cheating? It's fair competition. Perfectly reasonable. Luo Feng Yuan is infuriated but quickly changes her expression to one of smugness. Just now, I fed brother Xiao water. Can you do that? Zi Ruoyan coldly glances at her, childish. Zi Ruoyan then tells Zhong Yang Ming, regardless of whatever method Lord Xiao has thought of, proceed with the existing plans. Try to arrange for the citizens to pack their belongings and move into the fortified structures. Zhong Yang Ming bows, Your Majesty, rest assured, we are already doing that. Luo Feng Yuan looks somewhat worried. I wonder what kind of method brother Xiao has thought of. I hope nothing
something goes wrong. Zi Ruoyan lowers her head in thought, recalling Xiao Tian's determined gaze. I don't think so. He was being truthful. He said he wouldn't burn himself up or use any forbidden spells, so he won't. Hearing this, a relieved Luo Feng Yuan starts daydreaming again. Come to think of it, Brother Xiao is really amazing. A body cultivator with such incredible power. I wonder just how powerful he is. The eldest, one of the personal guards, suddenly chimes in. I've heard that some heavenly materials and earthly treasures can indeed help body cultivators break their limits. Their combat power could even compare to a 17th level. At this, Luo Feng Yuan excitedly pats her chest, revealing her grand plans. This empress is extraordinarily talented. Once I break through the 20th level, I'll find those treasures for Brother Xiao. I'll help him break his own limits and become the number one body cultivator in all the realms and domains of this universe. Zi Ruoyan takes a sip of her hot tea and casts a mocking glance. Oh please, with your intellect, I'm really concerned that you won't find any treasures and will instead get yourself in trouble. This matter is better handled by me. Luo Feng Yuan explodes, glaring at her as she grits her teeth. You're so annoying. Can you not talk about brains? Really? Zi Ruoyan sets down her teacup and reveals a mischievous smile. If not brains, then what? Should I say that a fool is sitting on top of your neck? Unable to win either in a verbal exchange or by yelling, Luo Feng Yuan finally loses her temper. Ah, you little bun, I'll fight you. The two immediately tumble into a playful brawl. Xiao Yuer watches them with a somewhat wistful look. Why do our mothers love fighting so much? Lu Yen crosses her arms, thoroughly enjoying the spectacle. Her majesty's combat skills are improving rapidly. Luo Feng Yuan's three personal guards, long accustomed to this, nod in agreement. Our empress is also making rapid progress. Zhong Ling let out a light sigh, so exhausting, but she had no choice but to continue her tedious standing meditation practice while watching the two empresses fight to amuse herself. At this moment, Xiao Tian and Long Chiodao arrive at the deepest part of the storage area. Slowly, he opens the final door revealing his most closely guarded secret. Xiao Tian caresses a metal cabinet, unable to help his sentiment. I didn't expect to actually use this. Long Chiodao, full of curiosity, examines the cabinet. Master Xiao, what is this? Xiao Tian smiles nostalgically. This is a single soldier armor weapons arsenal, pausing for effect. Master level edition. Long Chiodao looks confused. A single soldier weapons arsenal? Never heard of it. It must be quite powerful, right? Meanwhile, Xiao Tian has already verified his palm print, slowly opening the cabinet. As the door opens, a hissing sound of gas emanates from it, revealing the true nature of the weapons arsenal. Long Chiodao is transfixed, unable to suppress a gasp of astonishment. Xiao Tian is also excitedly looking inside the cabinet. The first thing he sees is a golden demonic mask, ferocious yet mysterious. Below the mask are a sword and a knife, each engraved with the phrases one sword to wealth and worldwide peace. There is also a faint blue electric current pulsating. Long Chiodao is dumbfounded. What kind of writing is this? I've never seen it before. And how can there be an electric current inside a metal cabinet? Xiao Tian laughs as he draws a knife from the cabinet. This is my weapon, black and white. With a gentle swipe, the knife easily tears a crack in the space in front of him. Satisfied, Xiao Tian smirks. Not bad. Truly worthy of being my weapon. Now, onto serious matters. With that, Xiao Tian gestures, and the sheath from the arsenal is drawn to his hand. He sheathes the knife, his expression turning serious, and leads Long Chiodao back out. Long Chiodao keeps glancing back at the slowly healing spatial rift, shocked in his heart. This knife is too terrifying. Catching up with Xiao Tian, Long Chiodao suddenly asks, Master Xiao, you took the weapon, why didn't you wear the battle armor? Xiao Tian looks at him somewhat speechlessly, we're going to address the safety issues of the people, not get into a fight. What's the use of wearing that thing? Pausing, Xiao Tian then corrects him very seriously. Also, that's my former assassin's outfit, not battle armor. Long Chiodao is startled. Assassin's outfit? Considering its flashy gold color, how did you ever manage to assassinate anyone while wearing it? Xiao Tian thinks for a moment. I once had a friend who was into stealth and assassination. He was so good at hiding that he liked to hide in toilets, under beds, and in cabinets. As a result, he earned strange titles like Slayer of the Shitter, Killer Under the Bed, and Shadow in the Cabinet. Learning from that, I changed my method of stealth. I call it frontal stealth. I'd wear this cool assassin outfit with a mask and just eliminate everyone at once. Isn't that perfect stealth? With that, Xiao Tian suddenly gives a thumbs up, looking very proud. That's why my title is King of Hell. Long Chiodao is stunned for a moment, but finally claps softly. You're right, there's no flaw in your logic. Keep it up. Walking behind Xiao Tian, Long Chiodao suddenly asks, Master Xiao, how do you plan to handle this situation? Slowly drawing the impermanent knife, Xiao Tian says, since there are too many people and not enough time to transport everyone into the Holy Dragon Relic, I'll simply cut out the space of the Guardian Domain. Can you pull it directly into the relic? Long Chiodao is taken aback. That's a bold and skillful plan. Of course, it's possible. If such a large space is cut out, it will be stable enough to be directly pulled into the Holy Dragon Relic without any issues. Then let's get started. With a slight smile, Xiao Tian leaps forward, holding the impermanent knife imbued with a golden
golden flame. Raising his hand, he lightly slashes at the space, and a spatial rift instantly starts to spread. The entire guardian domain seems as though it's being disemboweled and packaged away. Looking at his handiwork, Xiao Tian is clearly very happy. So many people are saved, and once again using this knife is not for slaughter, but for saving lives. He thinks, I'm actually being a good person, rescuing countless families. Families? Xiao Tian seems to think of something and suddenly turns to ask Long Chodao. Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion are now lands without masters. Wouldn't the captured people be happy to return to their homelands? Hearing this, Long Chodao suddenly starts. Master Xiao, are you thinking of? A glint of wisdom flashes in Xiao Tian's eyes. Exactly what you're thinking. If I also cut out the territory of the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, will it fit? Long Chodao's mouth twitches. After pondering for a long time, he finally says, Master Xiao, over in the bipolar realm, it's a normal dimensional world. Cutting out space, there would be a hundred times more difficult than here. Xiao Tian reassures him as if it's a small matter. No issue, I'll just increase my strength by a hundred times when I'm cutting, right? Long Chodao suddenly feels uneasy and cautiously asks, Master Xiao, if I may be so bold, did you just cut out that space using only 1% of your power? Xiao Tian blurts out, of course not. Relieved, Long Chodao exhales, good, good, you haven't shattered my understanding of the world. But the next second, Xiao Tian estimates and says, probably around 5 ten thousandths of my strength. Long Chodao is instantly stunned, his eyes glazing over as if his soul is about to ascend. His understanding of the world has finally collapsed. Seeing Long Chodao almost going offline, Xiao Tian hurriedly comforts him. Are you alright? I was just joking with you. After a moment, Long Chodao, who has barely recovered, shakes his head wildly while laughing and crying. Master Xiao, no need to say more. Five ten thousandths. Ha he. Xiao Tian looks at Long Chodao holding his head, acting like he's gone mad. Why can't Long Chodao take the truth? Why did he break? I know how to kill people, but how do I deal with a mad old man? I have no clue. Or is it because I'm too strong? And after telling him, he went mad with jealousy. Xiao Tian speculates to himself and seems to find an answer. Shaking his head, he warns himself, better not tell the harsh truth in the future. Excellent men always attract jealousy. After a long time, Long Chodao, who has calmed down, bows slightly to Xiao Tian. I lost my composure for a moment. Forgive me. Xiao Tian asks with concern. Are you really alright? I was really joking with you earlier. Long Chodao nods vigorously and stands close to Xiao Tian, smiling obsequiously. Master Xiao, I understand. From today on, I will be Xiao Tian's personal old steward. No one else can command me. Even if it's the human emperor or the prince, I belong to Xiao Tian. No changing that. Alright, as long as you're fine, Xiao Tian says. Walking back, let's go find Luashi and Zhou Sen. Long Chodao pauses. Why is that? Xiao Tian smiles. Look, the southern wilderness realm is deserted, so of course, I can cut it at will. Bipolar realm is different. Other powers exist there. I'm a reasonable person. To avoid accidentally cutting into someone else's territory, I need those two locals as my advisors. Shortly after, in a plaza outside the imperial city within the guardian realm, eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji are suspended on a platform, hands behind their backs and feet tied together, in an incredibly rare posture. The crowd below is buzzing, but the two hanging men have lifeless eyes, like walking corpses. Luashi tells Xiao Tian, their souls have collapsed. They're gone, but their bodies are still alive. Xiao Tian sighs deeply. It seems they still haven't realized their mistakes. They're sending me their final silent roar by collapsing their souls. Well, they were men of courage. Let's take them down and lay them to rest. Zhou Isen, standing nearby, quickly agrees. Suddenly, Xiao Tian turns around, looking curious. By the way, how did they end up like this? Who did it? Zhou Isen replies truthfully. It was ordered by Prime Minister Zhong. Xiao Tian's eyes widen in astonishment. Done by Zhong the chef? So, is it General Zhong who knows how to have fun or is it you, the chef? You two as a couple. Something's not right. After instructing that the two bodies be taken down, Xiao Tian signals to a nearby official. Young man, come here for a moment. Facing this hero prince of the Great Flame Dynasty, the young man hurriedly steps forward, his face filled with admiration. Prince, what are your orders? Xiao Tian carefully considers for a moment. I've thought it over carefully. Let's build them decent graves. Remember, the tombstones must be large enough to list their foolish deeds. Write it in the style of a self-critique. Then place a statue next to the tombstone, kneeling, so that the statues can continue to atone for their sins. Xiao Tian's face is full of compassion. Remember, the material has to be good. This is the only thing I can do for them. Hopefully, they will be moved in the afterlife. The young man is thrilled. Prince, that's a brilliant idea. Making them restless even in death. They truly deserve it. He bows excitedly. Prince, I'll go and get it done right away. Watching the young man's elated departure, Xiao Tian feels both pleased and content. He turns to Long Chodao, Zhou Isen, and Luashi. See? Doing good deeds makes people happy. Look at him. How happy he is smiling. Long Chodao smiles warmly in response. Master Xiao, you're absolutely right. Luashi wipes the sweat from his forehead, sharing the sentiment with Zhou Isen. Of all the people to cross, you had to cross this guy. He won't let you rest even in death, and he says it's for your own good. Actually,
Actually, you'll never find peace, and yet he insists it's for your benefit. Truly, you had it coming. Xiao Tian turns to the two and says, All right, let's talk about the real reason I asked for your assistance. I want to sever and take away both the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion. I need you two to help me identify the dividing points between them and the other powers in the bipolar realm. Moving closer to the two, Xiao Tian continues, After this is accomplished, remember, the credit mainly goes to Long Chiodao. You can't say it was my doing. Otherwise, Her Majesty will worry about me. Even if I explain, she'll think I'm making excuses. Speaking the truth these days is risky. Just earlier, someone almost had a meltdown due to it. As he says this, Xiao Tian glances at Long Chiodao, whose face is full of obedient attention. Xiao Isen, however, is somewhat shocked. Prince Xiao, can this really be done? Lu Ashi is equally concerned. Prince Xiao, be careful. If you get caught in a fractured space, it's no joke. Moments later, both Lu Ashi and Zhou Isen are left stunned, almost dropping their jaws and eyes. My god, he's not human. They watch in disbelief as Xiao Tian cuts through the space as smoothly as slicing tofu, and Long Chiodao methodically draws it into the holy dragon relic. Xiao Tian has genuinely severed the space of the guarded domain and packed it up to take away. Lu Ashi trembles, silently praying, Brother, I will inherit your will, protect the people well, and follow Prince Xiao towards a new future. Zhou Isen covers his face in fear and a somewhat frenzied expression. I talked back just now. I'm really courting death. I won't get beaten, will I? Xiao Tian pays no mind to their thoughts, simply instructing Wang Chiodao beside him. First, take these two into the Holy Dragon Relic. We're going to the Bipolar Realm. Almost instantaneously, the scene around Xiao Tian shifts rapidly, and they arrive at their destination in the next second. Lu Ashi and Zhou Isen look at the familiar Bipolar Realm. We're here already? Xiao Tian looks down at the land below him and slowly draws out his impermanent knife. This should be fun. He turns to the two and says, you two are in charge of providing information. I'll handle the cutting, and Long Chiodao will take care of storing it in the relic. With just a few swishes, the entire space is divided cleanly, without a hitch or any oversight. The whole block of space slowly floats up and is transferred into the Holy Dragon Relic by Long Chiodao. Xiao Tian watches his handiwork while contemplating. The task of moving everyone into the Holy Dragon Relic is done. Now it's time to find my in-laws. But will they disapprove of me? I'm just a son-in-law who lives off his wife. Other than fighting, I can't do much else. Oh well, I'll deal with that later. Giving up on his thoughts, Xiao Tian dives into the Holy Dragon Relic. Going back and playing with Empress is more fun. Meanwhile, far away, the esteemed Purple Emperor, hiding behind his wife, suddenly sneezes. Strange, who's thinking about me? Never mind, I'll just eat some spiritual fruit to increase my abilities. At this moment in the palace, Zi Ruoyan is panting heavily, fanning herself continuously. This is too exhausting. Luo Feng Yuan stands to the side, hands on her waist, and laughs heartily. Ha ha ha, that was such an exhilarating fight. Wiping the sweat from her forehead, Zi Ruoyan can only sigh in resignation. Luo Feng Yuan, you're like an energetic cow. You fight endlessly and seem to get more and more excited. At this moment, Luo Feng Yuan, who has calmed her emotions, suddenly thinks of something. Looking at Zi Ruoyan, she says, I think I can guess what Brother Zhao's plan might be. He will probably first test how many people the Holy Dragon Relic can accommodate in the coming days, and then use the War Furnace to evacuate some. He'll save as many people as possible. The territories of Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion in the Bipolar Realm are currently no man's land. Migrating there should be no issue. Pausing, Luo Feng Yuan looks at Zi Ruoyan seriously. As for me, the Empress, I will do my best to help. I will make sure that as many of our citizens as possible are safe, allowing the Great Flame Dynasty to thrive on new land. You've said before that we must preserve the Great Flame Dynasty so that when your parents return, they will have a home. Zi Ruoyan wants to say something but can't find the words. She remembers that Luo Feng Yuan, when drunk, once said that all her parents and siblings had died. Is Luo Feng Yuan saying goodbye now? Indeed, Luo Feng Yuan's eyes, shimmering with restrained tears, tell Zi Ruoyan that this might be their last duel. The next time we meet, who knows when that will be, she says, trying to smile. After all, I am the holy demon empress of the primordial demon kingdom. I can't remain in exile forever. If it were before, I would have stayed here, despite your annoying habits, like ambushing me during baths. But having someone to argue and fight with has been rather nice. You remind me of a sister. Upon saying this, Luo Feng Yuan finally can't hold back her tears. From you, I learned what it means to be an empress, what responsibility is. I also realized that the fates of many in the primordial demon kingdom depend on my choices. Zi Ruoyan looks at her with reassurance and earnestly tells her, you will certainly be a great empress. Finally, Luo Feng Yuan says solemnly, Zi Ruoyan, take good care of yourself. If anything happens, make sure you come to find me. You may not realize just how terrifying your awakened abilities are. Know that, in tens of millions of years, there have only been two awakenings among the descendants of the human emperor. So, you must keep your bloodline and constitution a secret. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan's expression also becomes serious. She nods. Don't worry, I understand. Before parting, Luo Feng Yuan pats Zi Ruoyan's head. I will 
will help you gather information about your parents. If there's any news, I'll send someone to inform you. Also, take good care of Brother Xiao for now. Once the Primordial Demon Kingdom stabilizes, I will come to get people. Luo Feng Yuan extends her hand, and Zi Ruoyan grips it. Give up any hope of victory by then. Looking at the two, seemingly reluctant to part, their three female bodyguards can't help but feel emotional. The Empress has finally grown up. Although the Bipolar Realm and the Holy Demon Realm aren't far apart, who knows how many years will pass before they meet again. Perhaps Xiao Tian will become an indelible part of the Empress's memory. Lu Yan also watches them keenly. The appearance of the Holy Demon Empress makes up for the fact that Her Majesty has no close friends. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Just as everyone is lost in emotion, Xiao Yu or suddenly speaks. But both of you mothers should know. Dad and Dragon Mound have already packed up the territory and moved it. The Holy Dragon Relic is already flying towards the Holy Demon Realm. This farewell is meaningless. You'll be together again soon anyway. She shrugs. You both are so silly. One moment you're like sisters, in the next you're kicking and punching each other. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan looks at Xiao Yu, her eyes filled with confusion, packed up and moved. Luo Feng Yuan is stunned for a moment. The Holy Dragon Relic is flying toward the Holy Demon Realm. We're all inside the Holy Dragon Relic right now. Xiao Yu or nods. Didn't you feel a bit shaky and nauseous just now? That was when we entered the Holy Dragon Relic. Zi Ruoyan looks at Xiao Yu in shock. You mean the entire Great Flame Dynasty has been placed inside the Holy Dragon Relic? Zi Ruoyan has already caught on and slowly asks Xiao Yu, who nods in confirmation. Yes, Dad and Dragon Mound somehow managed to separate the entire Great Flame Dynasty from the Southern Wilderness Realm and placed it inside the relic. Because I have a connection with the Holy Dragon Relic, I could sense it. Xiao Yu's words leave Luo Feng Yuan somewhat puzzled. If that's the case, shouldn't the Holy Dragon Relic be flying toward the Bipolar Realm? Xiao Yu slowly explains. Dad and Dragon Mound also separated the territories of the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion from the Bipolar Realm and placed them inside the Holy Dragon Relic. At this point, Xiao Yu shrugs. That's why I said they packed up and moved. Upon hearing Xiao Yu words, the room falls into complete silence. The three female bodyguards are left speechless, staring at Xiao Yu. They know full well just how outrageous this accomplishment is. Space is not something you can simply manipulate at will, especially a whole, healthy world realm. To cut off such a large area, could it have been Long Chiodao's doing? No wonder he once followed the human emperor. His abilities are truly terrifying. In that case, Luo Feng Yuan finally breaks the silence. It would be best for Brother Xiao to stay in my demonic palace. It's big, soft, and comfortable. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly smirks, and Zi Ruoyan points at her. Didn't someone just say something about giving their place to whoever came first? Ah, did someone say that? Lo Kao, Zi Bun. The next second, the two figures collide again, as if their previous tender sisterly affection was merely an illusion. Moments later, Xiao Tian's head pops out from the courtyard entrance, looking puzzled. Are they still fighting? Are they really that energetic? Meanwhile, in the Eastern Flame Kingdom, the citizens are tearfully grateful towards Luoshi. It's good to be back. Thanks to you, we can finally return home. Luoshi, helping an elderly man, says, All credit goes to Prince Xiao. Without him, you wouldn't even be alive, let alone returning home. Hearing this, the people of Eastern Flame unanimously speak. Yes, we all know the name of Prince Xiao, Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. We've already discussed it. Once we get home, we'll set up a shrine to honor him daily. Exactly. I'll prepare a shrine in my house as well. My family too. Just then, Luoshi's nephew interrupts. Aren't you exaggerating Prince Xiao's achievements? Wouldn't the Great Flame Empress be? Before he could finish, Luoshi slaps him, trembling with anger. If you want to die, don't drag me into it. What nonsense are you talking about? Prince Xiao is unparalleled in benevolence and respect. What are you compared to him? Spreading such nonsense. You can quit your post. Go home. Lock yourself up for 10 years. And come out only when you've improved your temperament. Meanwhile, in the Astral Pavilion, Joey Sin tells everyone, from now on, we must maintain the utmost respect for Prince Xiao. Follow his words and carry out his will. Remember, Prince Xiao is even more revered than your ancestors. Understand? The disciples hurriedly reply. Understood. Joey Sin clenches his fist. Trust me, this is the best decision for everyone. Following Prince Xiao is absolutely the right choice. I don't want to say much more. Let's continue our work. Arrange for the citizens as Prince commanded. Be polite in both speech and action. Serve the people, understand? The disciples loudly reply. Understood. At this moment, in a far-off place, inside a grand hall, many people are staring at a crystal. Inside the crystal are figures that surprisingly turn out to be Zi Ruan's parents. Within this mystical realm, the sacred spirit fox awakens. I am the guardian spirit of this sacred site. Did you summon me? The sacred spirit fox turns to the esteemed purple emperor. Have you awakened your human emperor bloodline? Your daughter Zi Ruan has also awakened her human emperor bloodline? The sacred spirit fox seems incredulous. You didn't bring her with you? Where did she awaken her bloodline then? At this moment, fearsome powerhouses who are waiting for the trial to end are getting impatient. Find her immediately. Search for the esteemed purple emperor's daughter and bring her back. Ha 
Ziroyan. Ha. If we find her and marry her to one of our kin, the next generation could have a semi-emperor bloodline. That would be quite something. Elder Shua, since you've got the esteemed purple emperor in your grasp, it's time for us to vie for Ziroyan. Old Snowy. It's weird. You asked the Snow family patriarch to save your own daughter and son-in-law back then. Why didn't you bring your granddaughter back too? The current patriarch of the Snow family remains seated on his fluidic throne floating in the void, his face clouded, and his hands clenched. I regret not doing so. At this moment, within the mystical realm, esteemed purple emperor asks the sacred spirit fox, what about my other children? Upon hearing this, the sacred spirit fox summons a crystal mirror. Both of your other children have died in the wars. Esteemed purple emperor looks stunned, subconsciously holding onto Shuaruyan, muttering incredulously, only Ziruoyan is left. The esteemed purple emperor's face darkens, remaining silent. The fox spirit of the divine sight, which never airs in its divination, confirms the death of his two sons. They no longer exist in this world. Quickly composing himself, the esteemed purple emperor turns to Shuaruyan. We need to expedite our plans. After we pick up your parents, we must find Ziruoyan immediately. Her situation has now been fully exposed, and I fear many will try to locate her. Shuaruyan stops her tears, staring at the esteemed purple emperor and nodding affirmatively. The esteemed purple emperor takes a deep breath, staring into the distance as if his gaze could cross space and time to reach his daughter. Ziruoyan, hold on, your parents are coming to save you. At this moment, in another place, the Great Flame Domain is continuously approaching the Holy Demon Domain. Luo Feng Yuan looks at the report in front of her, her head aching. Zi Ruoyan, however, is somewhat curious, so the so-called Primordial Demon Kingdom is this vast and magnificent. It's really something that you became the Empress. Turning to face Zi Ruoyan, Luo Feng Yuan says, if it's a matter of settling things with fists, I really don't have many opponents in the Primordial Demon Kingdom, but why do I feel so nervous when I'm actually returning to my own kingdom? Is it because I've been around Zi Ruoyan and know how hard it is to be an Empress? Before Luo Feng Yuan can gather her thoughts, Xiao Tian delivers a chop to the top of her head. We're going to your homeland. Why are you getting nervous? Come on, pull yourself together. With a few more hits, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly feels energized. Zi Ruoyan watches this and rubs her temples, thinking, this silly cow is beyond help. Just then, the entire continent rumbles, the ground quaking. At this moment, the Great Flame Domain is slowly entering the Holy Demon Domain. Long Chiu Dao bows and says, Master Xiao, we have arrived in the Holy Demon Domain. Soon after, everyone reaches the Demon Palace. Xiao Tian starts to lift his visual limitations. Looking at the surrounding scenes, Luo Feng Yuan winks at Xiao Tian. How is it, Brother Xiao? Isn't the scenery of the Holy Demon Domain beautiful? Xiao Tian snaps back to reality, giving Luo Feng Yuan a thumbs up. It's indeed more beautiful than I imagined. Luo Feng Yuan points towards the Grand Palace in the distance. See over there? That's my Imperial City. The Demon Palace is right there. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan moves a little closer to Zi Ruoyan. Zi Bun, I can generously offer you a place to stay. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan nods and directly agrees. Is that so? Then I would be most honored to accept. Luo Feng Yuan is taken aback. Shouldn't you be playing hard to get and insisting on staying in the Great Flame Dynasty's palace? Why aren't you following the script? You're messing up my plans to show Xiao Tian around and have a nice time just the two of us. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan's puzzled expression, Zi Ruoyan huffs, child's play. Moments later, the group flies towards the imperial city of the primordial demon kingdom. The holy dragon relic floats not far behind them. Long Chiu Dao suddenly comes up to Xiao Tian and communicates telepathically, Master Xiao. Have you noticed? Xiao Tian nods lightly. By all accounts, with the long history of warfare here, there should be an atmosphere of resentment, killing intent, and even the smell of blood. It's as if the primordial demon kingdom's past battles were fake. Could someone have sensed my arrival and deliberately staged this to mislead me? Long Chiu Dao is speechless. Master Xiao, the world isn't that malevolent towards you. Stop overthinking. As Xiao Tian senses the sweet atmosphere of the holy demon domain, he wonders how comfortable the beds are in the demon palace of the primordial demon kingdom and whether the food is good. But how should I arrange the territories and people inside the holy dragon relic? Now that the entire domain world is under Luo Feng Yuan's rule, and with Zi Ruoyan, who has the legitimate imperial bloodline of the human race, there shouldn't be any more trouble. I should finally be able to rest comfortably. What was I just thinking about? Ah, it doesn't matter. Relaxing is what's important, thought Xiao Tian. Just as Xiao Tian was lost in thought, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly shouted, We're holding a court meeting. Everyone needs to be there in half an hour. After making the announcement, Luo Feng Yuan walked straight into the Grand Hall. Zi Ruoyan twitched her lips. Is this how court meetings are usually conducted in the middle of the afternoon? Moments later, Luo Feng Yuan was seated at the center of the hall, with her legs crossed, looking down at the court officials gathered. Beside her was Zi Ruoyan, and on the other side was Xiao Tian. The ministers were baffled, but performed the ritual of kneeling and bowing. We greet the Holy Demon Empress. With her arms crossed, Crossed and legs propped up, Luo Feng Yuan said, I don't have anything special to announce. I mainly have two decrees. First, she leaned towards Xiao Tian.
Qian, this man beside me will be the one and only official prince of the primordial demon kingdom, so forget about any ideas of adding people to my harem. Second, Luo Feng Yuan patted Zi Ruoyan on the shoulder. This woman here is the empress of the human race's great flame dynasty. She and I are love rivals, but she's also teaching me how to be a good empress. You should all show her some respect when you see her. Waving her hand, Luo Feng Yuan concluded, that's all I have to announce. You're dismissed. The ministers looked at each other, confused but united in their blessings. Congratulations, your majesty, on finding a wonderful partner and a good friend. We shall take our leave. With the blessings echoing, Luo Feng Yuan started to smile. All right, our matters have been satisfactorily resolved. She winked at Xiao Tian. So, how do you feel? Now you're the prince of both the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom. Xiao Tian looked completely bewildered. What just happened? The court meeting is already over? Zi Ruoyan was also puzzled. What were you doing just now? Luo Feng Yuan casually replied, holding a court meeting, of course. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan looked somewhat alarmed. Don't tell me that this is how you've always conducted court meetings? Luo Feng Yuan frowned. What else? I've already learned so much from you. Haven't I improved? Zi Ruoyan was even more shocked. Improved where? Luo Feng Yuan answered confidently. This time, I didn't use any force. Zi Ruoyan silently looked at the three female bodyguards, who nodded back at her, looking helpless. She then massaged her forehead. Luo Feng Yuan, can you please shift some nutrients from your chest to your brain? Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian's face flushed. He coughed awkwardly, then turned to Long Chiu Dao. Shouldn't we consider merging the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion into the Holy Demon Domain? Long Chiu Dao was somewhat taken aback. Ha, huh? ah, yes, we should. He then bowed slightly to Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan. Your Majesties, Prince Xiao, and I will take our leave. Moments later, they floated in the air. Xiao Tian pointed ahead. Long Chiu Dao, what if I carve out a space here and integrate the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion? What do you think? Long Chiu Dao quickly waved his hands. Absolutely not. If you do that, where will the people of these original lands live? Xiao Tian stroked his chin thoughtfully. You make a good point. Does this mean that the domain world itself has some malleability and flexibility? Should we give it a try? With Xiao Tian's terrifying power, the entire holy demon domain was forcibly expanded. He then signaled to Long Chiu Dao. Indeed, it is malleable. Let's go. Soon, they arrived in the void. Xiao Tian merely reached out his hand and joined the holy demon domain with the great flame dynasty seamlessly. Now we don't have to worry about overcrowding. Long Chiu Dao was completely dumbfounded. Isn't it said that the stronger your abilities, the more you can elevate your fate and gain the favor of heaven and earth? What happened to the laws of heaven and earth? To the rules? Why does it feel like Xiao Tian just does whatever comes to mind, and it actually works? Later in the evening, inside the sacred hall of the demon palace, Xiao Tian was enjoying some hot pot as a reward for himself. Long Chiu Dao, who was beside him, was somewhat curious. Lord Xiao, with your incredible strength, haven't you ever thought of unifying the various domain worlds? Xiao Tian looked at the hot pot, unifying everything? Too exhausting. Long Chiu Dao was even more confused. Just because of that? Xiao Tian shook his head. Isn't that enough? Why make life so hard for yourself? Desires that are too big and heavy will only suffocate you. Xiao Tian leaned back in his chair, looking up at the night sky. Unifying the various domain worlds sounds like an ambitious and grand plan. But such grand ambitions are very tiring. I don't like it. Just as Xiao Tian was saying this, there was suddenly loud arguing coming from the entrance of the courtyard. Kao Luo, this is my daughter. Let go of her. Zi Bun, the one who should let go is you. She's my daughter. However, when the two arguing empresses entered the courtyard, they both showed smiles at Xiao Tian and walked toward him. Following behind them were the guards Lu Yan, the sycophantic Zhong Ling, and some female bodyguards who acted like nannies. Xiao Yuer was distressingly being tugged by both her mothers, almost being pulled out of shape. At this moment, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao. Cold, lifeless things really aren't interesting. What's living is what I like. Xiao Tian then waved his hand. Hold on. Don't get me wrong. I'm not mocking you for being gone. I'm talking about the grand ambitions you mentioned earlier. Long Chiu Dao didn't argue any further. You're strong. You're right. I'll keep quiet. Ha. Ah, the scene changes, and a group of people are gathered around a table enjoying hot pot. It's a very harmonious setting until Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan start arguing over a piece of meat. Zi Ruoyan shouts at Luo Feng Yuan. Let go. Lord Xiao is my prince. You don't need to worry about him. Luo Feng Yuan retorts. You should let go. I picked this for Xiao brother. Xiao brother is my prince too. Thank you. Just as their disagreement escalates, a pair of chopsticks suddenly snatch the piece of meat they both were aiming for. Xiao Tian then brings it to his mouth. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are somewhat stunned. Xiao Tian senses the awkward atmosphere. Should I give it back to you? Hearing this, both empresses simultaneously say, it's fine. Xiao Tian then eats the piece of meat and looks at the night sky, both empresses by his side. Suddenly, Xiao Tian addresses everyone. Now that the Great Flame Dynasty is successfully located in the Holy Demon Domain and both are unified, should we consider forming an alliance? Make the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom sister countries, establishing an empress alliance? We will
will each maintain our independence but allow trade between us. Keep major laws consistent and unify travel documents to make travel between the two countries convenient. Luo Feng Yuan immediately raises both her hands, eyes shining. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. We could even jointly hold court sessions. When either of us empresses is in need, we can help each other handle court affairs. The next second, Zi Ruoyan gives Luo Feng Yuan a flick on the forehead and angrily says, Could you be any more outrageous? You're the empress of the primordial demon kingdom, not me. You wish. You want me to work for you for free? Subsequently, Zi Ruoyan drags Luo Feng Yuan away. Starting from today, your special empress training will be doubled. Luo Feng Yuan reaches out to Xiao Tian. Xiao brother, save me. Xiao Tian sweats nervously and can only avert his eyes. The moon is really round tonight. The guards on the side even shed tears of emotion. Zi Empress, we entrust our empress to you. For the safety and well-being of the primordial demon kingdom's ministers, we're counting on you. The next morning, the cries of street vendors ring out. Come take a look. This is the green flame empress wine, endorsed by both great empresses. And this bottle even has our primordial demon kingdom empress's handwriting on it. It's priceless. Immediately there's a scramble from the crowd. One demon clan citizen bids 200 gold. Another from the human clan counters with 300 gold. Then comes a flurry of bids. I bid 500. 600 here. Don't even try. My dad is an official. I bid 800. Not only that, even the livestock raised by Xiao Tian end up on the dinner table. A demon clan man takes a bite and immediately praises. So delicious. This is the unique livestock meat from Green Flame Mountain. Another responds. Well, of course. Look who raised them. He's a man of legendary renown, but also very real and present among us. He has a heart and will of the utmost goodness. He has a face that could bewitch all beings. He's also broken through the limits of body cultivators to become the most powerful in history. The demon clan man raises both hands high. He is the man behind the union of the two empresses. So tell me, who is he? Children cheer below. Supreme benevolent sugar baby deity Xiao Big Prince. Xiao Tian, hearing this, is utterly speechless. Finally, covering his face, he laments, I have failed after all. I just wanted to reverse the embarrassing name from the Great Flame Dynasty side. Why is this so hard? What a calamity. Just then, a figure descends from the sky, heading straight for Xiao Tian. The next second, Xiao Tian is struck by a woman and feels a chill go straight through his heart. Xiao Tian lowers his head to look at the woman lying on top of him. She wears azure blue armor with golden dragon patterns. Compared to the tall figures of Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, this woman is petite and delicate. Scratching his head, Xiao Tian squints. The woman's silver hair with a tinge of blue instantly brings back memories of that rainy night. Identical silver hair, even the cowlick looks the same. However, her face is entirely different, not the same person at all. Long Chiodao, standing nearby, looks up and observes. The spatial fluctuations suggest that she must have encountered some urgent situation and fled here. Xiao Tian props himself up on his hands and also looks up. Above, the sky looks like a shattered mirror folding in on itself, but is slowly healing. Soon, it's as if nothing happened at all. Suddenly, silver white dragon scales appear on the woman's body, in places like her neck, forehead, and the backs of her hands. Long Chiodao's tone becomes serious. It looks like she was hiding her sacred dragon clan identity earlier. Now that she's unconscious, the distinctive features of the sacred dragon lineage are revealed, and it seems her generation of the sacred dragon clan is a bit different. Xiao Tian, propping himself up to stand, asks Long Chiodao, how is it different? Stronger. There's obvious evolution compared to the sacred dragons of my younger days. Long Chiodao answers. Long Chiodao chuckles. It seems the younger generation of my clan is quite fond of you, Xiao Tian. Even unconscious, she seems close to you. The next moment, Xiao Tian cradles the woman in his arms and prepares to leave. Let's go. Long Chiodao is somewhat puzzled. Are you taking her with you? Xiao Tian's tone is a bit melancholic. She might have some connection to me. Do you recognize the scorch marks on her armor? Long Chiodao hesitates for a moment, looking at the burn marks on the woman's armor. Indeed, they look like marks from flames, but not charred. They feel more like they've been purified, stripped of their spirituality. It's as if her armor has been weakened. Suddenly, Long Chiodao exclaims, it's Luo Empress's holy demon flame. Holy demon flame bypasses physical durability, burning flesh, bones, and internal organs, weakening the inner spiritual energy. The holy demon clan is extremely rare, and royal family members with the awakened supreme holy demon bloodline are even rarer. Only they can use the holy demon flame. Turning his head, Long Chiodao continues, based on the spatial fluctuations earlier, she doesn't seem to come from a faraway place. Thinking it over, Xiao Tian decides, let's go back and ask Luo Feng Yuan. Soon, Xiao Tian and Long Chiodao arrive in the hall, where Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are currently disputing over Xiao Tian's allegiance. Just as their argument reaches an impasse, Xiao Tian greets them. You two are up early today. However, both women are staring intently at the woman under Xiao Tian's arm. Breaking into a cold sweat, Xiao Tian senses trouble. Both Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan simultaneously demand, Lord Xiao, who is this? Scratching his head, Xiao Tian responds somewhat helplessly, Would you believe me if 
I said she fell from the sky? Zi Ruoyan squints at the woman and says, Luo, do you remember Lord Xiao once mentioned a silver-haired woman who saved him on a rainy night? Assessing the woman again, Zi Ruoyan adds, she seems to be of high status and likely quite wealthy. Zi Ruoyan then makes a fist and offers it to Luo Feng Yuan, temporary truce. Luo Feng Yuan bumps her fist back, understood. At this point, Long Chiodao begins to explain to the two empresses, you misunderstand. She is a descendant of my sacred dragon clan. She accidentally fell on Prince Xiao. She bears marks of being attacked by holy demon flame, so Prince Xiao brought her back. Xiao Tian sets the silver-haired dragon woman down on a spirit stone lounge chair in the courtyard. Everyone gathers around. Luo Feng Yuan reaches out and touches the woman's dragon horn. Sacred dragon clan is extremely rare, almost extinct. This is the first time I've seen one alive. Suddenly, she turns curiously to Zi Ruoyan. What do you think would happen if my holy demon horn collided with her sacred dragon horn? Whose would break? Zi Ruoyan looks at the disappointing Luo Feng Yuan and says, Can you not think about fighting all the time? Luo Feng Yuan pouts, You're no fun. She then reaches over to touch the scorched marks on the armor. These are definitely burns from holy demon flame, but awakening the supreme holy demon bloodline is difficult. She hugs Zi Ruoyan and adds, Still, it pales in comparison to her pure human royal bloodline. Ignoring Luo Feng Yuan, Zi Ruoyan continues, She must have been through a big battle. Her spiritual energy is greatly depleted, and she has suffered a severe head injury. As she says this, she lifts the woman's head and notes, Just as I suspected, there's severe bruising on the back of her head. She was likely attacked from behind while fleeing. Suspicion 1. Her armor's holy demon flame is connected to your holy demon clan. Suspicion 2. Did she come here out of chaos, or is there another motive? I lean towards the latter, and it has to do with suspicion 1 about the holy demon clan. Turning to Xiao Tian, Zi Ruoyan poses her third suspicion. Is she the woman who saved you? Xiao Tian frantically shakes his head. No, I don't even know her. She just fell out of nowhere and landed on me. Pretending to cough, he adds. Luckily, I've recovered quite a bit. Otherwise, with her crashing down in that full armor, I'd probably be in some real trouble. At this point, both Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan grasp Xiao Tian's arm, looking somewhat reproachful at Long Chiodao. Dragon Mound Elder, it's not about blaming you, but you promised to take good care of Lord Xiao. And now, he got hit unexpectedly. What if it wasn't a woman who fell on him, but something else? Luo Feng Yuan joins in the blame. Dragon Mound Elder, you didn't keep your word. Long Chiodao is speechless, thinking to himself, you're worried about Xiao Tian getting hurt? If a whole realm fell on his head, you should be more concerned about that realm. Xiao Tian places the woman on a bench. As everyone gathers around, the woman with dragon horns suddenly stirs and wakes up. Her name is Dragon Mound by Qing. Upon opening her eyes, she finds herself surrounded by unfamiliar faces staring curiously at her. Startled, she abruptly sits up and asks, Who are you? Zi Ruoyan glares at her, You unexpected guest, falling from the sky and landing on my husband. Luo Feng Yuan, standing nearby, quickly interjects, and on my husband as well. Zi Ruoyan rolls her eyes and pushes away the hand on her shoulder, asking sternly, Who are you, and what is your purpose for coming to the holy demon realm? The white-haired dragon lady frowns, holding her forehead as she thinks hard. I, I am Bai Qing, and I don't remember much else, but there is a name that seems familiar, Luo Tao Yin. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan and her three bodyguards faces dramatically change. Luo Feng Yuan exclaims, My father is alive? She rushes forward, grabbing Bai Qing's arm. Who are you? How is my father still alive? And why did he save you? Luo Feng Yuan's eyes fill with complex emotions. The name has always been a sore point for her. Dragon Mound Bai Qing shakes her head, showing no resistance. I'm really sorry. I don't remember anything else. Just that name. Luo Feng Yuan bites her lip, gripping Bai Qing's arm so tightly that the armor makes a cracking noise. Zi Ruoyan quickly embraces Luo Feng Yuan. Calm down. Given her current condition, even if you lay hands on her, she won't remember anything. Also, are you sure your father saved her? Listening to Zi Ruoyan's words, Luo Feng Yuan's emotions stabilize somewhat. Suddenly, she snaps her fingers, and a fierce holy demon flame erupts, covering the burn marks on Bai Qing's armor. Moments later, the flame transforms into a fiery net that envelopes Bai Qing. Luo Feng Yuan looks pleased, as if she had expected this. She explains to the crowd, this is the holy demon flame my father left to protect her. Even I can't attack her. Faced with this evidence, Bai Qing can only helplessly respond, I'm really sorry, I don't remember anything. At this point, Long Chiodao suddenly steps forward, smiling, child, my name is Long Chiodao. In some sense, I am your elder. Our sacred dragon clan has exceptional physical constitutions. It's unlikely that you'd lose your memory from a simple blow to the head. I need to look for a reason but, just then, Bai Qing interrupts, I need to reveal the dragon spirit, right? Long Chiodao looks somewhat surprised, you know, he was wondering how to explain it. Bai Qing remains calm, what I lost seems to be just my past memories, not my knowledge. Subsequently, she closes her eyes, and, the next second, a spectral dragon ascends from her body. This is the dragon spirit, the soul of the dragon race. However, the once majestic silver dragon spirit is now covered in alarming patterns, as if changed.
chained. Wang Chiodao exclaims in horror, this is the blood curse technique, an ancient spell formed through the sacrifice of flesh and blood. It looks like her memory has been sealed by this curse. Zi Ruoyan analyzes the situation calmly. If my conjecture is correct, she was being hunted down to be silenced. They didn't want her to spill any information. She turns to Luo Feng Yuan, and your father was likely covering for her, even helping her escape. Once she successfully escaped, they could only resort to attacking the back of her head to curse her and keep her from revealing anything. Finally, Zi Ruoyan looks at Long Chiodao, Dragon Mound Elder. How can this curse be broken? Long Chiodao keeps his eyes fixed on Bai Ching. This kind of flesh and blood curse uses life as a lamp and flesh as fire. It's everlasting. To break the curse, kill the person who cast it. Xiao Tian, who hasn't spoken for a while, shocks everyone with this statement. People all turn their heads to look at him. He just shrugs, looking impatient. Isn't it simple? If the curse is everlasting, just smash the lamp. Why make a big fuss? Xiao Tian mutters to himself. I haven't even mentioned rebooting yet. Maybe I could give it a try. For a reboot, soul reconfiguration would be necessary. The success rate should be pretty high. Xiao Tian's scrutinizing gaze makes Bai Qing inexplicably nervous. Turning his head to ask Long Chiodao, Xiao Tian inquires, is there any kind of elixir that can fully restore a shattered soul? Long Chiodao thinks for a moment, the anti-void spirit communication pill indeed has such a miraculous effect. I do have plenty. After all, my body is that of a dragon spirit, such a pill. He suddenly realizes something is off about Xiao Tian's statement. Wait, shattered soul, you don't mean what I think you mean, do you? In my hometown, there's a saying, if there's a problem, don't worry, just reboot, and everything will be fine. Xiao Tian looks at Bai Qing, if we shatter her soul, the flesh and blood curse will have no host, right? Then we restore her soul, and everything's fine. It's basically just a reboot. Long Chiodao quickly shakes his head, that won't work. Her dragon spirit is inside her, in the sea of consciousness in her head. Shattering the dragon spirit is no different from killing her. It's simple then, just blow up her head first, and then heal her, Xiao Tian says. His eyes shining as he looks at Bai Qing. Where should I start? His words shock everyone. What kind of crazy idea is this? The girl is just sitting there, and you want to blow up her head? Actually, it's a very good idea. A calm, melodious voice rings out again. Everyone turns to look at Bai Qing, who is sitting on a spirit stone lounge chair. The silver-haired dragon lady adjusts her posture and leans her head towards Xiao Tian. Please go ahead. This unexpected turn of events leaves everyone speechless with amazement. They never thought that Bai Qing would agree to such an outrageous request. Xiao Tian, hearing her agreement, is overjoyed. Great courage, very decisive. I like it. He starts warming up his fists. Turn a little. This angle is not good. If it's not done properly, it will be difficult to heal later. Okay, I understand. Bai Qing shifts slightly to adjust her angle. I hope this works, so my memories can be restored and I can find my father. Don't worry, I'll control the strength and angle to make sure it ends painlessly, Xiao Tian assures her. Luo Feng Yuan, who is standing beside them, has a flushed face and sultry eyes. This is so thrilling. I want in too. Just as she finishes speaking, she's met with a furious punch from Zi Ruoyan. Is this the thrill you were talking about? What are you thinking in that silly head of yours? Zi Ruoyan then turns to Xiao Tian, and you, put your fists away. Who came up with this insane idea to blow up someone's head? She then walks up to Bai Qing, grabs her, and lifts her up. And are you an idiot for agreeing to this? The truth might be in my memories, and the curse on the dragon spirit could potentially attract unnecessary enemies. Bai Qing, who's lifted off the ground by the tall Empress Zi Ruoyan, maintains her calm demeanor and analyzes. Finding a way to break the curse immediately not only could reveal the truth, but also help us avoid unnecessary danger. Though the method is risky, it's a gamble worth taking considering the outcome. Seeing Bai Qing's determined face, Xiao Tian also nods continuously. He pats Long Chiodao who's beside him. Anyway, Long Chiodao has many potent elixirs, so it should be fine. Shut up, Zi Ruoyan says with a dark face, glancing at Xiao Tian. This scares Xiao Tian and Long Chiodao into a shiver, both of them falling silent immediately. There's an old saying that the two most terrifying creatures on earth are an angry mother and a stern wife. Truly, the intimidation is real. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan looks at Bai Qing and shakes her head. This method is too risky. It's not worth gambling with your life for no reason. Upon hearing this, Bai Qing immediately gives Zi Ruoyan a good person card, saying, you are indeed a very good person. If this works, there's at least a 70% chance. Even 70% is not acceptable. Let's think of other ways. Zi Ruoyan interrupts, grabbing Bai Qing's chin. I'm declaring, not discussing. Do you understand, young lady? Bai Qing responds, based on the age we appear to be, calling me young lady is not appropriate, and pushes Zi Ruoyan's hand away. This leaves Zi Ruoyan stunned for a moment, who then looks closely at Bai Qing. This of yours is so small. Are you even 20? For the first time, Bai Qing shows some emotion. She glances down, then looks up at Zi Ruoyan. She points to Luo Feng Yuan, in front of her. You shouldn't be surprised by this. Luo Feng Yuan bursts into laughter upon hearing this. Someone really shot themselves in the foot. Zi Ruoyan's mouth twitches in annoyance, looking at Zi Ruoyan. But you don't need to be so sensitive. Overall, you're still very beautiful. I'm not sensitive.
Executive, Zi Ruoyan retorts. Zhong Yangming quickly interrupts, regardless of whether it's for Her Majesty Luo or for her own sacred dragon clan identity, she must stay here. So, what should we do with this young lady from the Dragon Mound? Before anyone can respond, the girl suddenly stands up and goes over to Xiao Tian, sniffing him as if no one else exists. What are you doing? Xiao Tian asks, puzzled. Unexpectedly, the girl floats up the next second and licks Xiao Tian's cheek. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are immediately stunned, and everyone else's eyes widen, shocked beyond words by her audacious action, especially in front of two empresses. Long Chiu Dao, your descendant sure is bold, someone remarks. The girl suddenly hugs Xiao Tian's neck and says to everyone, I want to stay by his side. I don't know why, but it feels very comfortable next to him. He even smells nice, very sweet. She feels that not only are her injuries healing faster when she's with Xiao Tian, but even her dragon's aura is gradually increasing. Seeing the two of them so intimate, Zi Ruoyan instantly loses her temper, clenching her fists and yelling, Scoundrel, get off Xiao brother right now. She attempts to pull the girl away, but the girl clings to Xiao Tian, explaining calmly, being by his side right now is the best choice for both healing and sensory reasons. Please forgive me, but I can't leave his side. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan, perhaps thinking she's missing out on something, excitedly rushes forward and blurts, Wait, I want to lick too. If I weren't so busy, I'd smack you with a hammer. Zi Ruoyan retorts, What are you doing? Help me pull her off. Finally snapping out of it, Luo Feng Yuan helps Zi Ruoyan try to pull the girl away. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian stands there, utterly confused, watching the three women struggling. What's going on here? Puppy, do I have some healing abilities or something? The system, Puppy, then explains, Bai Qing comes from the sacred dragon lineage, an emperor-level sacred dragon bloodline, and you, master, are a descendant of dragons. It makes sense for someone of the sacred dragon lineage to be drawn to you. Your body has been getting stronger, and her being around you will also help her become stronger. Hearing this, Xiao Tian is rendered speechless, so my body is still being strengthened? When will it ever stop? I'm sorry, master, but I can't detect any limits to your physical strength at the moment. However, please be patient. Once your body is fully strengthened, you'll be able to start training. Xiao Tian is somewhat surprised, so I can actually start training? I thought I'd be a regular person my entire life. Just then, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly shouts, Hey, why are you being so gentle? Just get physical. As soon as the words leave her mouth, Xiao Tian sees Luo Feng Yuan suddenly deliver a high kick, aiming her heel down harshly at the girl. The girl's pupils dilate, and electric lights seem to shimmer in her eyes. A golden thunderous power suddenly manifests, and in an instant, the girl flickers to stand behind Xiao Tian. Luo Feng Yuan's kick misses entirely. Zi Ruoyan then brings her two fingers together, forming a long sword from her concentrated energy. Be careful not to hurt Lord Xiao. He still hasn't fully recovered from the after effects of his last outburst. Luo Feng Yuan grins, her eyes full of excitement. Don't worry, I promise I won't. When two empresses join forces, she won't be able to dodge. The girl remains silent, still clinging to Xiao Tian's neck while her body sparkles with electric light. Watching the two charged up empress wives, Xiao Tian sighs internally. I'm just an innocent bystander. Can you not involve me? The two empresses lock eyes and whisper, let's go in together. Immediately, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan simultaneously attack. Swords and kicks fly, but the girl nimbly avoids them while sticking close to Xiao Tian. Neither can land a hit on her. Annoyed, Luo Feng Yuan mutters, this damn white hair, why is she as slippery as an eel? In a sudden motion, Luo Feng Yuan spins her body and launches another kick at the girl. At the same time, Zi Ruoyan also spins around, and the two, sticking close to each other, accidentally direct their attack towards Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian, who had been passively watching the spectacle, suddenly finds himself the unintended target. Both Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan are horrified and quickly shout for him to dodge. We can't stop it. However, Xiao Tian, with a twitching smile at the corner of his mouth, prepares to catch the incoming attack. He knows he can't dodge, otherwise they'll surely fall to the ground. But who could have known that in the next second? Thunder manifests. The girl who had been clinging to Xiao Tian suddenly blocks the front, enduring both attacks head on. The flickering lightning around her acts like two twisting vortexes, absorbing all their attacks. The girl lets out a pain grunt, clenching her teeth, but still, she can't help but spit out a mouthful of blood onto the ground. Upon seeing this, the faces of Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan instantly change. They rush forward to support the girl, but she speaks up. Thank you both. Spitting out that stagnant blood actually makes me feel much better. Luo Feng Yuan frowns, but it seems like your injuries have worsened. Zi Ruoyan is also concerned. Why didn't you fight back? Why didn't you dodge earlier? The girl softly shakes her head. When you decided to take me in, that was an act of kindness. Therefore, I can't raise a hand against you. As for not dodging, you mentioned that he hasn't fully recovered from his after effects. He couldn't have withstood that attack. Based on my calculations, enduring the blow could help circulate my energy, so absorbing the attack was the best outcome. She 
speaks these words with a calm demeanor. However, as she talks, fresh blood continues to flow from the corner of her mouth, making her look somewhat frightening. For a moment, everyone is silent. How is she able to calmly analyze the situation while spitting out blood? This doesn't seem related to her amnesia caused by some curse, does it? At this point, Zhong Ling in the corner is the first to react. Quickly, treat her wounds. She's bleeding non-stop. What are you all staring at? Hearing this, everyone scrambles into action, picking her up and hurrying. She is then laid down on a spirit stone lounge chair. Long Chiu Dao takes out a bottle and pours out some elixirs, but the girl takes one look at them and speaks again. Taking an elixir is not as effective as staying close to him. Zhong Li Huang is somewhat confused upon hearing this and looks at Xiao Tian curiously. What's the logic behind that? Xiao Yuer floats onto Xiao Tian's shoulder and spreads her little hands, reminding them, it's true, being near daddy is very comfortable. Haven't you all noticed? Upon hearing this, Zhong Ling and the others remember that their cultivation speed seemed to increase significantly whenever they were near Xiao Tian. Even the two empresses, when dealing with official documents, could easily resolve complicated issues as long as Xiao Tian was present. With this thought, everyone in the room starts to look at Xiao Tian intently, feeling somewhat embarrassed under the scrutiny. Xiao Tian suddenly hears Luo Feng Yuan propose a theory. Didn't brother Xiao once mention that he ate something that helped him break his limitations? Could it be that this heavenly treasure is incredibly potent and is fused with his flesh and blood, radiating its benefits to those around him like a mobile elixir? Zhong Ling claps her hands in sudden realization. You're right, your majesty Luo. No wonder she wanted to lick Prince earlier. Xiao Tian stands there, completely baffled, a series of question marks filling his mind. Scene changes. Xiao Tian and his three companions are eating hot pot. Zi Ruoyan speaks earnestly to the girl. Firstly, due to the matter concerning her father and your health condition, it's settled that you will stay. However, I won't feel comfortable leaving you near Lord Xiao. No one can guarantee whether you have ulterior motives. The girl nods at Zi Ruoyan's suspicions. Your doubts are reasonable. Even I can't assure whether I was good or bad before my memory loss. Zi Ruoyan seems to breathe a sigh of relief at her understanding, giving a slight nod. It's good that you understand. Starting from today, I will officially move to Prince's palace and live with you. If something happens to you, I'm afraid I'll live the rest of my life in regret. Xiao Tian feels a bit helpless. Here she goes again. Why does Zi Ruoyan always have to make grand overtures? Is she testing my tolerance? At his side, Luo Feng Yuan's eyes widen with barely suppressed rage. Damn it, the Great Flame Empress is truly cunning. She must have been planning to move into Prince's residence for a long time. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly slaps the table. No, I must move there as well. Zi Ruoyan, seemingly expecting this reaction, casually picks up a piece of lettuce and asks, Why does the Holy Demon Empress want to move in? Isn't my presence sufficient? Gritting her teeth, Luo Feng Yuan replies, She knows something about my father. What if she suddenly remembers the past? I need to be the first to know any news concerning my father, so I have to be near her. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan dips some boiled vegetables into a sauce and then puts them into her mouth. Zi Ruoyan follows suit. The girl watches them in awe, so that's how you're supposed to eat it. No wonder it tasted so salty when I tried to drink it. What should I do now? Can I ask for another serving of sauce? Zi Ruoyan pays no attention to the girl's thoughts and snorts at Luo Feng Yuan. Your mind seems to be working better these days. No wonder your chest has gotten smaller lately. Not to be outdone, Luo Feng Yuan retorts, really? Seems like someone is just too jealous and keeps an eye on others. Hearing this, Zi Ruoyan doesn't bother with more words. With a loud bang, she slams a jug of wine onto the table. Whoever loses, go back to your own palace. Luo Feng Yuan also produces a jug of wine, her eyes ablaze. Bring it on, who's afraid of whom? The battle of the two empresses erupts again. Meanwhile, the girl on the side finds a solution. She pours both empresses dipping sauces into her own bowl and starts to eat voraciously. Even as the two empresses argue and drink, contesting each other jug for jug, she continues to eat as if nothing else matters, thoroughly enjoying her meal. Xiao Tian looks at the three with a helpless expression. It hasn't been that long since our last drinking contest, and now we're at it again? A sense of nostalgia comes over me. Soon, the courtyard is littered with empty wine jugs. Xiao Tian is holding Zi Ruoyan, while the girl supports Luo Feng Yuan. The four of them head toward the inner chamber. A moment later, the two empresses are placed on the bed and embrace each other again. Xiao Tian can't help but sigh. Back to the same old routine. Just then, a loud burp echoes from the side. The girl looks embarrassed. The food was really good. I haven't had such a satisfying meal in a very long time, so I may have overindulged. My apologies. Xiao Tian waves his hand dismissively. If you enjoyed it, then eat as much as you like. It's just a small amount of money for the food. I control the household finances. After all, he gives a thumbs up, looking proud. Though she's not sure what he's so proud of, the girl quietly says, thank you. Please get some rest. After saying this, 
the girl sits down cross-legged and closes her eyes, entering into a state of meditation. Not wanting to waste words, Xiao Tian immediately slaps her, knocking her out, and then carries her to a recliner. I don't know what you've been through before, but a good night's sleep is important. You don't need to be on guard here. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly feels something is off. Behind him, the two women, their eyes shimmering with intelligence, are glaring at him intently. The next moment, the inner chamber is filled with the sounds of Xiao Tian's discarded clothing and his painful wails. Calm down, both of you. Don't tear my clothes. Just because I don't hit women doesn't mean you can get out of control when you're drunk. Wait, don't. Stay away. Xiao Tian sits shivering in the corner of the bed, while Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan look at him as if he were a little red riding hood, and they were wolves, almost drooling. After a three-way battle of sorts, they all fall into a deep, exhausted sleep. Meanwhile, in the chaotic void outside the holy demon realm, a portion of space suddenly distorts. A grand and rugged black warship violently forces its way through the distortion. The entire ship seems to be constructed from an unknown black wood. Boss, it looks like we've reached the holy demon realm, says a figure standing on the deck of the warship, surrounded by others who are similarly towering and strong. Each one is about two meters tall, their skin adorned with blood-colored patterns, and they emanate a strong smell of blood. According to the star maps we've captured, this should be the place. I didn't expect our pursuit would lead us all the way here. His deputy, rubbing his bald head, looks at a book in his hand emitting fluctuating spiritual energy. Something feels off. The dimensions here seem to be more circular, bigger. There's a slight discrepancy with our star maps. Yes, send out a scout team to get a sense of the place. It would be best to capture someone valuable for questioning. Let Squad 10 handle it. They're not too powerful. Won't startle the enemy. As he says this, he continues to gaze at the holy demon realm ahead. We've paid a high price to get here. We must capture Luo Tao Tian and Bai Ching. Meanwhile, back at Prince's palace, Bai Ching opens her eyes and sits up, appearing somewhat dazed. She remembers that she was meditating and feels as if she was knocked out. Thinking this, Bai Ching quickly rolls over and stands up, scanning her surroundings. The room is in disarray, with unidentifiable rags all over the floor. You're awake, a voice says. Lifting her head, Bai Ching sees Xiao Tian making the bed, dressed in new clothes. Bai Ching nods gently and looks around, asking, was there a thief here yesterday? Xiao Tian finishes making the bed and sighs. We had a fight yesterday, so it's a bit messy. A fight? Bai Ching thinks for a moment and shakes her head. Although we haven't known each other long, it seemed like everyone got along well last night. I can't imagine you'd fight. Xiao Tian leans on his waist and says, the deeper the relationship, the fiercer the fights. You probably wouldn't understand. Hearing this, Bai Ching looks puzzled, but Xiao Tian doesn't offer any further explanation. He simply says, those who understand, understand. No need to spell it out. Bai Ching picks up a torn piece of silk from the floor, stained with blood, and furrows her brow. Is this from tending to wounds? I can't believe your arguments get so heated. Yes, the battle was intense. You could call it domestic violence, says Xiao Tian as he snatches the silk from her and stores it away. This kind of thing sets a bad example for the children. It seems being the consort to an empress isn't easy. Bai Ching notes. Xiao Tian nods and walks over to the window with a steaming cup of tea. It's not easy, especially when it's two against one. I can't win. He sips his tea and adds. Too bad this world doesn't have goji berries, but I have green flame pigs. I'll ask Zhong Yangming to make some stir-fried kidney. That should solve everything. Decided, he runs off, reminding Bai Ching to stay in the prince palace and to not wander off. Confused, Bai Ching asks if something happened. I have some business to attend to. Just stay put. There's no point in wandering around. With that, Xiao Tian runs off, leaving Bai Ching to ponder. No point, ha? Huh? Upon reflection, that seems true. Bai Ching looks around the empty hall and stands alone for a long time before sitting down in a cross-legged position to meditate. After the formation of the Empress's Alliance, there are two joint court meetings every month. These meetings are jointly hosted by the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom to discuss matters of mutual concern. Naturally, they are held at a location on the border of the two territories, in a temporary Empress Hall built in front of the Prince Palace. At this moment, the two Empresses exchange glances in the hall. How about it? Shall we continue tonight? Zibon, this time, I want to go first. Xiao Tian sneezes from a distance. Who's talking about me? Early in the morning, Xiao Tian finds his chef Zhong Yang Ming, preparing to order stir-fried kidneys and roasted lamb kidneys. Before he can order more, Zhong Yang Ming interrupts. Prince, how about I make you a complete nourishing feast? Ten dishes that will absolutely rejuvenate you. Looking at the chef's frail appearance, Xiao Tian can't help but wonder, are you sure? Will it be effective? Zhong Yang Ming looks dead serious. Yes, Prince, rest assured. I've tried it. Recalling Zhong Yang Ming's wife, Zhong Li Huang, Xiao Tian instantly understands. When it comes to nourishment, probably nobody is more authoritative than Zhong Yang Ming, this heavy armored cavalry. Thinking this, Xiao Tian suddenly puts his arm around Zhong Yang Ming's neck. Speaking of which, after training in martial arts with me, you must be doing much better, right? Zhong Yang Ming smiles ambiguously. All thanks to your excellent teaching, Prince. Things have been much easier recently. All right, prepare yourself.
yourself. I'm taking you to Green Flame Mountain, says Xiao Tian, preparing to leap. But just then, Zhong Yangming suddenly frowns and yells, Prince, someone's coming. In the next second, whooshing sounds fill the air, and almost instantly, for bald men in armor surround them. Johnny Sin focuses on the two. According to our information, the holy demon realm is ruled by the primordial demon kingdom. One of you is the prime minister and the other a prince. You should have a lot of information. Johnny Sin slowly approaches and gestures. Gentlemen, if you don't want any trouble, please come with us. Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming follow the direction indicated and see a UFO. Its massive body is hovering up and down. Xiao Tian is baffled. Is this an alien? Zhong Yangming is equally surprised. What on earth is that? Where did these people and this weird thing come from? Never seen it before. While the two are still bewildered, Johnny Sin steps forward and looks down on them, sneering. Don't make any futile resistance. Otherwise, all you'll face is despair. Zhong Yangming becomes irritated and suddenly produces a talisman in his hand. Who will be the one to despair remains to be seen. Emperor's sword energy. Go! As soon as Zhong Yangming's words fall, the talisman absorbs spiritual energy and instantly transforms into a golden sword energy, charging towards Johnny Sin. In an instant, the sword energy hits Johnny Sin but doesn't affect him due to the blood red runes on his armor that burst into fearsome energy. What a pathetic attack! Johnny Sin brushes the dust off himself, shakes his head at the frail looking Zhong Yangming, and says, Seems like you really can't heed my advice. Inferior human race. Then, Johnny Sin turns around and walks towards the spaceship, ordering his men, break his legs and take him and Prince Xiao Tian with us for further orders. But just as he takes two steps, a team member calls out, Captain, something seems off. All the bald men look horrified and involuntarily take a step back, but a towering shadow still envelopes them. Johnny Sin, annoyed by his team member's words, asks, What do you mean? They're just humans. What's there to be scared of? Turning his head, his pupils instantly contract. Oh shit, that's terrifying. Zhong Yangming has somehow transformed into a giant, nearly 30 feet tall, covered in explosive muscles. He's staring intently at Johnny Sin, and even his casual breathing emits a mist that seems like clouds in motion. Zhong Yangming exudes an incredibly terrifying aura, leaning his explosive physique forward, clenching his fists. He looks at Johnny Sin and says, Inferior human race? That's an interesting way to put it. Then show me what you've got, and let's see how you make this prime minister despair. What do you say, little sprout? Seeing his subordinates shaking in fear, Johnny Sin hastily shouts, Don't panic. Stay calm. His aura is only at the 10th level. It's just his size that's intimidating. Taking a deep breath, he pats his subordinate shoulder, backing down before fighting isn't the Blood Rune Clan style. With that, Johnny Sin's body starts to inflame as his form enlarges, and his aura climbs rapidly, reaching level 13. Encouraged by Johnny Sin, his team members also roar as their body muscles swell, and blood-colored runes flash. Johnny Sin takes the lead, charging at Zhong Yangming at an explosive speed, attacking him relentlessly with the blood blades on his arm armor. His team follows suit, their previous fear forgotten, surrounded and attacked from all sides. Zhong Yangming can't dodge in time. Enraged, he snorts, his body tightens, and the wounds inflicted by the blood blades immediately start to heal. Zhong Yangming then coldly sneers, jumping monkeys, weren't you going to make this prime minister despair? Let's have a face-to-face -face battle then. Without further ado, he lunges forward, his massive form almost overshadowing everything. Two of the bald men don't even have time to dodge and are smashed into the ground by his giant, stone-like fists. They collectively gasp, is this even a human? Zhong Yangming clenches his fists again, visibly irritated. The Great Flame Dynasty has just stabilized, and the Empress combined primordial demon kingdom is still in the making. Who are these crawling creatures daring to stir up trouble? Johnny Sin roars in anger. How can a mere human be this strong? Ignoring his outburst, Zhong Yangming takes a deep breath, steadying his stance according to the stances he learned while training with Xiao Tian. His right fist expands as he yells, giant spirit fist. With that, Johnny Sin is sent flying, feeling as if his body is falling apart. However, as he flies backward, a cunning smile crosses his face. You fell for it. Using the momentum from Zhong Yangming's strike, he flips and lands beside Xiao Tian, holding the blood blade against Xiao Tian's neck. Prime Minister, don't make any rash moves. If my blade slips, you won't be able to complete your mission for your majesty. Xiao Tian looks emotionless at the blade against his neck, then turns to Zhong Yangming who has stopped at a distance and says, What are you looking at me for? Keep fighting. Why do I have to do everything? What's the point of your martial arts training? He even yawns out of boredom. Johnny Sin is dumbfounded. This guy really has some nerve. Seeing Xiao Tian looking at him, Xiao Tian raises a nut in his hand. Want some? Johnny Sin is completely stunned. Does he even realize the situation he's in? At this moment, Zhong Yangming nods and says, I understand. In the next second, his aura erupts again as he charges directly at Johnny Sin. Frightened, Johnny Sin hastily shouts, Stop. Don't you care if this man lives or dies? Seeing him not stopping, Johnny Sin grits his teeth and roars, You forced my hand. It's all your fault. Then he swings his blade towards Xiao Tian's neck. There's a loud clanging sound, and Johnny Sin is shocked. He can clearly feel the pain in his arm and sees that his arm is bent at a 90 degree angle, broken by the impact.
impact. Unable to bear the pain, Johnny Sin cries out and crouches on the ground, trembling. Xiao Tian continues eating his nuts, glancing at Johnny Sin who's kneeling on the ground. You're a strange one. What's the point of self-harm? Johnny Sin looks at Xiao Tian's neck. Not even a scratch. What the hell is this guy? His teammates are equally horrified. Our boss's blade was ineffective against that waste. Seizing the opportunity, Zhong Yang Ming throws a hard punch at them. You guys actually get distracted during a fight? The intense wind from the punch makes their eyelids twitch. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian spits out a nutshell. You guys are really resilient. Your recovery ability is pretty scary too. Are you a body cultivator? Johnny Sin looks at the nutshell that landed on him, his mouth twitching. He quickly retreats, but as he lands at a distance, Xiao Tian appears beside him like a ghost, spitting out another nutshell. Why are you ignoring my question? How can you, as a body cultivator, break through the 10th level? Johnny Sin freezes on the spot. Something's wrong. What's up with this Xiao Tian? Being physically strong is one thing, but why is he so fast too? Could he be a 16th level expert or higher? Thinking of this, Johnny Sin suddenly thrusts his hand into his chest, shouting, everyone, burn the blood crystals, pulls out a fiery red crystal. His teammates cry out in disbelief. Captain, Johnny Sin gives them a wry smile, filled with a hint of apology. We have no choice. We can't go back alive anyway. Our only option now is to take them down with us. Saying this, he turns to look at Xiao Tian, his face gradually becoming ferocious. I admit, you're strong, but it doesn't matter. You can't stop this thing. As he speaks, Johnny Sin hasn't noticed that the object has disappeared from his hand. Xiao Tian holds up the blood crystal and examines it. You say this thing is dangerous? Johnny Sin is completely dumbfounded. When was it taken? The next second, Xiao Tian lifts his head and puts the blood crystal into his mouth, swallowing it whole. Damn it, Johnny Sin thinks. This is something that even 18th level experts would be blown up by instantly. How could he just swallow it? A moment later, a muffled explosion sound emanates from Xiao Tian's belly. Unconcerned, Xiao Tian pats his stomach and then suddenly opens his mouth to belch. Red smoke sprays out from his mouth. Xiao Tian looks thrilled. Oh, that feels great. The moment it entered my mouth, it was like taking a shot of strong liquor, followed by an explosive burning sensation. But far from causing pain, it felt like my organs got a warm vibrating massage. This thing is great. Definitely a high quality snack. Saying this, Xiao Tian looks at Johnny Sin with a face full of anticipation. Got any more? Give me another hundred. Johnny Sin stares at Xiao Tian in disbelief, unable to speak for a long time. Our clan's ultimate weapon, something that would obliterate everything in a hundred mile radius and dissipate all the spiritual energy between heaven and earth. How did it turn into a unique tasting snack in his mouth? Isn't this bullying the honest people? Zhong Yang Ming, who is standing nearby, holds on to other members of the Blood Rune clan. Prince, are you alright? Xiao Tian dismisses it with a wave of his hand. I'm fine. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming tosses the people he's holding like trash onto the ground, glaring at them. These people are troublesome and seem very special. They're actually body cultivators. Johnny Sin looks at his captured subordinates, despair filling his face. It seems we're doomed. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly turns serious and looks at Zhong Yang Ming, Prime Minister Zhong. From earlier until now, I've noticed something serious. Zhong Yang Ming, who just returned to his original form, immediately becomes anxious upon hearing Xiao Tian's words. Prince, what's the matter? Johnny Sin is even more nervous on the side. Could it be that our void battleship stationed outside the void has been discovered by this monster? If that's the case, our leader and others would be in danger. Who knew that the next second, Xiao Tian would point at Zhong Yang Ming and shout, First of all, your entrance pose was not cool enough. What was that crouch about? You should have been sitting, one arm on your leg and the other propping up your slightly tilted head, looking down on them coldly. Xiao Tian speaks as if he's very serious about this matter. Also, Giant Spirit Fist isn't a cool enough name. I've thought of a better one, raising arm of divine tyranny across the skies. As he says this, Xiao Tian suddenly turns to Zhang Sin. By the way, what race are you guys? Before Zhang Sin could snap out of his daze, he hears the question and becomes even more stupefied. Xiao Tian immediately slaps him. Under a precise control, Control of force. Johnny Sin spins like a top at high speed. Xiao Tian narrows his eyes slightly, and a terrifying aura of murderous intent begins to fill the air. I was just talking. Why weren't you paying attention? Are you plotting something? Johnny Sin, who's been slapped into a daze, finally mumbles. We are the Blood Rune Clan. Xiao Tian smiles slightly. Well, in that case, this punch shall be named the Titanic Divine Sky Dominating Blood Rune Annihilating Fist. What do you think? He looks at Zhong Yang Ming with confidence. Zhong Yang Ming can only awkwardly smile and say, Very good. Indeed, a a great name. Xiao Tian continues to give his insights. Some of your moves earlier were also incorrect. Your battle experience is still lacking. For instance, you wasted too much power, and some aspects of your attacks were not smooth enough. Zhong Yang Ming promptly takes out a notebook to jot down the pointers, feeling deeply impressed inside. No wonder Prince Xiao is so skilled in combat, truly a learning experience. However, he wonders, just what has Prince Xiao been through to have developed such intricate attacking techniques? With that thought, Zhong Yang Ming lets out a wistful sigh. After giving a few key points, Points. Xiao Tian says. Alright, that's enough for now. Digest what you've 
learned. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yangming quickly bows. Prince, I'll pay attention next time. Xiao Tian frowns. What do you mean next time? Why not right now? It's still early. There's plenty of time. Saying this, Xiao Tian suddenly takes out a bottle of elixir pills. He walks up to the severely injured members of the Blood Rune clan and feeds each one a pill. In no time, the men look at themselves in disbelief, feeling completely refreshed as if all their injuries have healed. At this moment, Xiao Tian claps his hands to get everyone's attention. All right, let's do it all over again, starting from the point where you all noticed him gathering energy within his body, preparing to fight. You guys need to act panicked and scared, like the first time you saw him. Don't look all dumb and numb. This is your chance for redemption. The members of the Blood Rune clan are puzzled. What's going on? Is this guy a director or what? Seeing their lack of cooperation, Xiao Tian feels a wave of anger rise within him. He throws a powerful punch, instantly smashing the member who was just standing there looking stunned. He then yells at the remaining people. What kind of expression is that? I'm giving you an opportunity here, and you're not even taking this rehearsal seriously. You're beyond redemption. Everyone is stunned by the imposing aura exuded by Xiao Tian. The giant from earlier took ages to beat us into severe injuries, but this guy obliterated us with a single slap without even any fluctuation in spiritual energy. This is too terrifying. Better cooperate. Perhaps, we could still survive and go back home to our families. Quickly, the first trial begins. Just as Zhong Yangming is about to throw a punch, he hears Xiao Tian shout, Cut! Blood Rune Clan, I need serious expressions from you. Fear, understand, be afraid. Let's do it again. On the fourth take, Zhong Yangming is in the middle of chasing the members. Xiao Tian speaks again. Cut. Zhong Yangming, pay attention to what's behind you, not just who you're chasing in front. Be aware of your surroundings. Let's do it again. By the sixth take, Zhong Yangming is beating up the members of the Blood Rune clan, who are wailing and begging for mercy. Finally, on the seventh take, one of the bald members can't take it anymore. The high-pressure environment and humiliation break him. After letting out a roar, he raises his hands and slams them onto his own head. His skull shatters. His soul leaves the body, but he has a relieved and satisfied expression on his face. However, Xiao Tian takes out another medicine bottle and encouragingly says, Escaping won't solve the problem. Facing it courageously is the only way to redeem yourself. As he speaks, Xiao Tian forcefully shoves two elixir pills into the man's mouth. The soul that was on the verge of ascending to the heavens suddenly halts, sensing that something is terribly wrong. The next moment, the medicine takes effect. His injuries heal rapidly, and his departing soul is violently pulled back, causing him to scream, Let me go! Let me die! Please! Don't revive me! No matter how much he struggles, it's futile. The man who is about to die suddenly sits up, gasping for air as if he just woke up from a nightmare. Xiao Tian then pats him reassuringly on the shoulder. Don't give up. I believe you can do it. The bald man's lips are trembling. Even though Xiao Tian is smiling at this moment, he still feels terrified. Why won't they let me die with dignity? Shaken to his core, the bald man seems to lose his mind, mumbling, it's karma, all karma. I was wrong. I shouldn't have set foot on an invading warship. Xiao Tian clenches his fist and shouts, stop playing dead. Let's do it again. Everyone remember, this is not a rehearsal. Zhong Yang Ming, begin. After several more attempts, the whole valley is a mess. Johnny Sin suddenly kneels on the ground, sobbing loudly. I was wrong, truly wrong. I shouldn't have invaded, shouldn't have taken joy in slaughtering humans. While crying, he beats his chest and stomps his feet. Finally, he looks up towards the sky, his eyes empty. Moments later, there's no sign of life left in him. His soul completely disintegrates. Xiao Tian looks at Johnny Sin, who has lost all hope of survival, and sighs. Why can't they even withstand such a minor test? Zhong Yang Ming starts to analyze with a serious face. At least, we can confirm that the Blood Rune clan are body cultivators. However, unlike the body cultivator realm, they can break through to higher levels. Also, what is the background of this Blood Rune clan? Why did they suddenly visit the Holy Demon realm? What's their purpose? Although their cultivation system is much weaker compared to the martial arts techniques you've taught, it's still very unique. What's the objective here? Just as he says this, Xiao Tian turns his head leisurely, only to suddenly freeze. The entire valley falls into silence. Only he and Zhong Yang Ming are left standing. All the Blood Rune clan clan warriors have turned into lifeless corpses, their souls vanished into oblivion. Zhong Yangming falls silent for a moment before finally speaking. Prince, you've gone too far, you've left none alive. Xiao Tian shakes his head, you're mistaken. It's not that I went too far, it's that they had something to hide and couldn't bear the pressure. They were probably plotting something against me and feared that I would see through it. With that said, Xiao Tian takes a couple of steps forward and places his hand on Johnny Sin's head. That's why they couldn't focus earlier and lost their chance to survive. With a slight
slight exertion of force, Johnny Sin's body instantly turns into ashes. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly spots a flying boat hovering in the sky. Zhong Yangming also looks up, and after pondering for a moment, says, These criminals from the Blood Rune clan have wasted your time. You even went to the trouble of teaching them how to be good, and had to personally rehearse with them. Labor fees, tuition, emotional distress, a mere flying boat will surely not be enough. With that, Zhong Yangming hands over their storage rings to Xiao Tian. Prince, with these, I think many people in the holy demon realm facing difficulties will be helped. This is not war spoils, it's charity and good deeds. Xiao Tian looks at Zhong Yangming, surprised and pleased by his enlightened thinking. He reaches out to tightly grasp Zhong Yangming's hand, somewhat excitedly telling him, you finally understood, I am not alone in my path.